Welcome to the Insanely Dangerous Retro Pod Show. Each week, we travel back and forth in time, striving to put right what once went wrong. Indeed, Dange, we celebrate, venerate, and ejaculate the very best of times, aka the 1980s and the 1990s. We rerun the fun and box your fizz whilst haphazardly deep diving into your childhood for a retro-tastically good time. It's a real wacky show where anything goes. So settle in and get ready for a good old chinwag between an overexcitable Wally and the bastard love child of Arn Anderson and the ginger bloke from Mask. He's Captain Gaz Insano and I'm Dangerous Dave and we're back for another week for more retro field chat. Yes, we're back. It is another week. There is more retro field chat, and we're here again and totally retro like Jet Set Willy or one pound posters from Virgin Records. <laughs> oh, nice. Both of those. Yeah, they are. They? Both of them are nice. How is your, uh, how is your nostalgia kung fu this week, my friend? Oh, it's ready to chop through all the nostalgia that you have to throw at me. Oh, ho, 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 lovely. <laughs> ah, marvellous. Good, good. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been feeling pretty... Uh, n- not, like, ill in the sense of, like, really hacking kind of stuff like that. I've just been feeling really bleh at the moment. <laughs> just, like, two weeks of feeling really crappy. But, um, yeah, I'm sure it'll go eventually. So, I mean, I can't really complain. <laughs> you know, other people have got it worse than me. Uh, there you so. go. You, yeah, you, you've powered through, whereas I I, uh, I tried to milk it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas I've, I've now I've come through the other side, um, and I feel... I tell you what, I feel so awesome. I Today, I would say, like, I, I'm, I'm not quite ache and pain-free, but considering how bad I've been the last couple of years... I am pretty much, for the for the sake of argument, pain, joint joint pain free. It's amazing. I am, in fact, today I feel the I am the physical embodiment of the song Transformers by Lion oh, from wow. the 1986 motion picture <laughs> accompanying soundtrack. Excellent. That's that's how I feel today. I um Excellent. I played a I played football for the first time in a month last night, and for the. the the first 20 minutes, I was like a um, a small black bird with a stripy red beak. I was <laughs> puffing. I was puffing oh. away. Um, but uh, once we had the dangerous drinks break, because it was quite warm last night, so I put my hand in the air and went, <gasps> which signified drinks. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, I think everyone was just really, really happy. You know, on one of those nights where you're the yeah. least fittest person on the pitch and you say drinks and everyone runs to their drinks faster than you yeah. can because yeah. they're, they're so glad <laughs> it was that yeah. warm last night and everyone's wearing two or three layers because it's always cold and miserable in southampton but we're like <laughs> stripping off layers like oh god but um <laughs> had the drinks and then all of a sudden it was like it was like in, when, like in rocky 2 when adrian tells him she's in hospital and she wakes oh, yeah. up and she goes i want you to do something for me he's like what he's like come here come here Win, and then I was yes. ding, 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 ding. And I was like, Bill Conti kicked in, and I was like, oh. I just, I fucking, I went for it. You've never seen a fat man run so hard and fast <laughs> in your entire fucking life. It was amazing. I just, it's so good to be out like the other side. I was like, was, I was like a pig in poo. I was nice. like, yeah, half pig in poo, half giddy schoolboy. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um. But on the flip side, on the flip side of that, um, I'm sure people in the UK will um, understand what I'm talking about here and, and join me as I give a quick shout out to the dearly departed Terence Hardiman, who um, played the, the demon headmaster in the show of the same name during the 90s. 
It, uh, it was um, genuinely unsettling and must-watch TV if you were a kid at the time. Um, he also featured in Poirot, Gandhi, Cadfile, and an, an, uh, an episode, nah, 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 an episode <laughs> of uh, the young Indiana Jones. Um, um, yeah, amongst many other shows and films in the career that spanned you know, over 60 years. So uh, uh, a big shout out to uh, TH. Um, thank you very much, dude. We we appreciate everything you did for us. He um, yeah, he, he died earlier this week. So that's very sad. Um, but it does it does remind me that we need to perhaps add that to the list of subjects because it was a book, a children's book. What are those things? Yes, that's um, yeah, that, that that's a bit of a um, that's a bit of an old one. Uh, it was a children's book and then was adapted to a children's BBC series. And um, said you being just that one year older than me. Or, well, I'm quite young, so you know it's like you know, a, a year and a couple of months older than me. Uh, it may it may have made a difference that slight age gap where you may have gone Meh, not interested, mate, but. Oh, I loved it. I don't. I don't know if you remember the the Demon Headmaster at all. I do. I do remember seeing the adverts for it. Um, I know it was on BBC Children's BBC. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what it was. I just never watched it. I oh. I don't know if something on CITV was on at the same time. Um, I think it may have just clashed. I just don't think it was something that pe- piqued my interest. There were a few BBC, children's BBC shows that were like that, much like Biker Grove that we've discussed in the past. Uh-huh. Um, just stuff that I never really watched. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not easy to get your hands on a copy of the Demon Headmaster. To be fair, um, I mean, we can do a show. It'll be interesting. I think it'll just be you talking about how much you loved it and me going, "Oh, really? Oh, okay, that's great. I never really watched it, <laughs> but sure." But well, no, I mean it. It has a it has its place in, uh, in you know in nostalgia and 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 kids I'm sure you know unlike myself who didn't watch it there's loads of kids like you who did watch it and loved it so and they read the books and and all that so well there you go yeah I mean yeah exactly exactly you know, um one person watching it or one person not watching it does not make it good or bad but yeah no it it, it was huge at the time and even our mutual friend Carl would um i think who's oh. again an extra year or two older than yourself i think um yeah. he used to he used to call one of our ex-work colleagues the demon headmaster very very <laughs> tall guy from the territorial or former territorial army tiny little glasses and um he, he just he just had an, a presence about him and um yeah it was a, it was a bit creepy the uh, the demon headmaster very good very oh, good yeah. at, yes. if you're of a certain age um a lot of fun but um yes better crack Indeed. on with the show because i've just yeah. been waffling for over 10 minutes i think <laughs> no worries i'll ask you the the question and uh, say gaz what are we what are we talking about this week well this week we're talking about the 1987 american supernatural horror the lost boys directed by joel schumacher the title was a reference to the lost boys in jm barry's stories about peter pan and neverland who, like vampires, never grow up. Most of the film was shot in Santa Cruz, California. The Lost Boys was released and produced by Warner Brothers and was a critical and commercial success, grossing over $32 million against a production budget of $8.5 million. The success of the film has spawned a franchise with two sequels and two comic book series. Critical reception was generally positive, Roger Ebert gave the film two and a half out of four stars, praising the cinematography and a cast that's good right down the line, but ultimately describing Lost Boys as a triumph of style over substance and an ambitious entertainment that starts out well, but ends up selling its soul. Despite this, the film has become almost legendary amongst its fans throughout the last 36 years and has had a huge cultural impact on how vampires are depicted despite this being originally being seen as a weakness. Now, before I upset the hardcore fans with uh, with my irreverence, because <laughs> that, that's what I do. That's what I do. You know, yes, yes. we, yes, 
uh, I, I do tend to revere the majority of the material that's on this show, but I can also be quite irreverent when, you know, when, um, when, time, when the time calls for it. Um, yes. I do want to say this film is a part of my DNA. Okay. okay. Now, my soul, and it will be part of who I always will be to the day I die. Okay. So, and in its own way, this is a breathtaking masterpiece. So, Anyone who thinks that I'm taking a dump on this film, you, you, you have to you have to hold on to that. OK, I'm going to say some nice things. I'm going to say some bad things because uh, it, it's, it's, it's occurred to me recently that I'm just going. Everything is amazing. Everything from the 80s and 90s is amazing. Apart from Willie Fogg. Everything is amazing. So I, I, I decided I need to be ever so slightly more critical. Um, but, but before right. I turn this into Swiss cheese and, you know, you know poke holes in it um what what's your first memories of it what's the first thing that when i when someone says to you the lost boys what kind of images or feelings does that invoke oh man i mean the lost boys wasn't a movie i saw when it first came out um and again i'm going to go back to the uh, age old tale i believe that i was introduced to lost boys by lloyd um <laughs> was purely he- are you sure Lloyd is a real person? Are you sure he's, it's not just your nickname for the, for the local video shop? No, no, because Lloyd has actually been on, he guessed on no. this uh, show before, so he's a real person. <laughs> I've met um, Lloyd, I've met Lloyd. I know. Uh, <laughs> you know. I mean, again, during the 80s and the early 90s, until I, until I went to school and met Lloyd, most of my film knowledge was like the classics, like Back to the Future, Bill and Ted, oh God, Star Wars. I mean, you know, those types of movies that they would show on ITV and that. I mean, Lost Boys was shown on there, but it was a lot later. Um, And I don't, I don't think I was really into horror up until I met Lloyd. So, Mm -hmm. and I know this isn't like a a classic, you know, it's not a Friday the 13th, it's a comedy, a horror movie. So it wasn't really something I paid attention at. Um, I, I'm pretty certain I watched this. Oh God, I want to say maybe '96. I know, I know, I let, I know Lloyd lent it to me. I'm sure he did. There's so many movies you lent to me. <laughs> I want to say like the late '90s. Um, so that was the first oh, time I wow. saw this boys. Um, and I remember, but again, I like Corey Haim um, and Corey Feldman. I, I, some of their '80s movies were great. I mean, like. Um, you know, Corey, Fel- Corey Feldman, more so than Corey Haim, had a lot of popular 80s movies. Um, he, was, he was in Friday the 13th. Um, he was in The Burbs, for God's sake. I love The oh, Burbs. Of course, yeah. Um, uh, the Gremlins. Gremlins, yeah. Gremlins yeah. License to Drive, which is a underrated 80s movie, which actually got Corey Haim in it as well. That was yes. probably, again, lent to me by Lloyd. <laughs> Stand by mm-hmm. me, he's in. For the Goonies, uh, Gremlins. I mean, he was in a lot. I mean, Corey Haim we was forget. also yes. Corey Haim was also in a lot of eighties movies. Um, just trying to think of uh, some of the ones he was actually in in terms of like, like really big hits. I mean, I know um, the Lost Boys was a really big hit. Um, uh, I'm just trying to check his like. I think I think that one of the movies I saw him in was like Lucas. Um, he was in quite a lot of 80s movies but a lot that you wouldn't be like oh well that was a big hit or that was a massive hit um yeah i i, I get stuck in my head someone said tell me a, a cory a cory hain film like license to drive and another one yeah license to drive yeah and a third one mm, license to drive i get stuck <laughs> i get stuck on yeah. that and it's it's stupid really i don't i don't know why um Cor- Cor- but- Hain was a lot more successful i think than cory Corey Haim, um, but they did a lot of movies together, and especially in the nineties. I think I remember them doing like this really random nineties movie with like Nicole Eggert or something, which was like an erotic thriller. I was like, "What's going on in this?" Something like Blown Away or something. I think it was. <laughs> like, well, it's just free. Yeah. It's like something you something you learn as a kid. You're like, "Oh, what's going on here?" Um, but I mean, I know when I watched it, I enjoyed it. Um, I was. Uh, I don't think I was disappointed that I didn't get to see it when it first came out. Um, but it has, it's got a great cast, you know, Kiefer Sutherland, who, you know, went on to do great things from like 24 onwards, but he did a lot of 80s movies as well, 90s movies. 
Um, it's got Jason Patrick in it, who I think was probably, I think that was like, he was more, he was in, what is, he was in Speed 2, wasn't he, Jason Patrick? Uh, he was indeed, yes. <laughs> Yes, which again, which wasn't a great sequel at all, <laughs> <laughs> and it has uh, the mum from uh, Edward Scissorhands in it as well, um, Diane West, who or Weist, who is actually a really good actress. Oh, um, she's she's cracking, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it also had uh, it also had Bill S. Preston Esquire from <laughs> Bill and Ted, which yeah, you did. I'd seen Bill and Ted long before I saw the Lost Boys, so I was like quite surprised to see him in this movie, but. You know, he, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a big role in it. I don't think he gets killed in it, but um, yeah, I mean, I remember the the music, the soundtrack to the Lost Boys was great. Um, I remember the saxophone dude playing in the <laughs> on the beach. I mean, the the opening screen, the opening shot of like going along the, uh, I guess we would say like a promenade, but like. You know the outskirts of where they were filming it, where they had like the um, I can't really trust the word for it. Not like a well, I guess like a carnival going where they had like a big um, spinning wheel uh, going. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So you got, they've got the seaside. Open. It's almost yeah. like um, it's it's got its roots in like a, a Victorian seaside uh, fun fair. Yeah. Um, but you know, but the but the the Americans just did it. They, they they tweaked it and just did it ever so slightly better than us. So with places like Coney Island, I say yeah. slightly better. Obviously, it's a it's a lot more updated, so it's a lot better. Yes. But they, you know, we're, you know, whereas we've got a bit of um, history and class about it, they, they've got like a lot more like oomph and woo. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to when it when it comes to places like that, um, so like fun fairs and and uh, you know amusement parks in the US, it's always just that little bit cooler, isn't it? Especially oh, when yeah. you're a kid. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, you you would rather go to an American fun fair than a UK one because oh, totally. the rides were far more superior than the you know over here. You just had like go karts and that was it, rocking <laughs> horses. You're like, oh, great, that is. Oh, um, the teacups. Um, yes. The tea <laughs> Uh, I remember thinking that the movie was pretty, you know, compared to some 80s movies where I felt like the action was very fast paced. It felt like it only took place over a couple of days. The the storyline in the movie, it, it like just had, had these had the Corey Haim family moving in with his uh, grandpa. And then it would just like went straight for like the same, you know, whereas some films take their time in setting up what's going on. It happens straight away. There's obviously right. some mysterious deaths happening. Uh, Keith Sutherland has got a gang hanging around. Um, the Frog Brothers, who are you know at you know working in a comic book store, I think. I think they work there, unless they're just dossing around. I yeah, can't. no, they're um, their their parents are hippies, and they're just yeah. stoned, and they fall asleep in the corner, and they run it. <laughs> yeah, for their for their stone hippie parents. Yeah, so I mean, it, it felt like what had happened from the start of the movie like escalated within a couple of days like only a few days went past where it all went and kicked off and it was like oh you don't really see that in 80s movies you it feels like the plot's longer whereas this one just felt like not rushed but they were just like they they didn't mess around they just went straight into it and you know yeah yeah made it as quick as possible but yeah. i mean i think i think really we're lucky that they managed that they managed to stretch it over what four four to five days yeah i mean i, I mean I, I i don't know i feel like they were trying to hold back it could have been like i mean if it, if we're lucky because it could have ended up being something like titanic where it all takes place over like eight hours true yeah so i suppose if you look at it like that yeah it, it could be worse it could have been really rushed but yeah yeah you're right i'd never thought of it before like that i, I thought it never occurred to me actually Oh, I mean, I, I, I rewatched it uh, yesterday and I just thought, you know, it was the, the pace of it was pretty fast, but it did what it needed to do to tell the story in terms mm -hmm. of like what was going on and what needed to happen. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good movie. Um, I, I don't think it was like it's, it's probably not in my top 10 80s movies, but I know Gosh, a lot of your people. Whore guns. <laughs> I know a lot of people. I know it's. I think it's one of Lloyd's favorite '80s movies, The Lost Boys. Um, but I mean, I just, I just, 
you know prefer other 80s movies to this one but i do i do like its charm i do like the actors the cast the storyline's great i've not seen the sequels i don't know if you've seen the sequel the second one and the third one no i've purposely i've purposely stayed away yeah purposely avoided it (laughs) because i just feel like it's in a way it's kind of like your first love um, right. and, and don't go back because it will never be better the second time you know like um yeah. like uh the dust till dawn okay uh, yeah. the dust till dawn sequels i've seen one and i knew it's gonna be shit even with <laughs> um oh i can't remember his goddamn name robert patrick right yes yeah, yeah even yeah. with robert patrick in there not even his acting ability can save wait well, he can't even save himself basically <laughs> right. he's like they, he's he's just gone like oh i can't be bothered i can't be bothered it's, it's something done it to for do. the money <laughs> yeah it's done it for the money it's something to do it get basically his wife's told like rob yeah you're getting under my feet fuck off yeah. go get go get another job oh right then it's like, it's, it's like it's, michael kane's reason for doing jaws 4 he needed money for a new house yeah, I don't want. I don't want a part of the profits. I want you to give me the money up front. Oh, yeah. All right then. But that, that <laughs> film was like an hour and ten or something, wasn't it? Or hour and twenty. Fucking. Bu- I remember watching that before the, watching the entirety of the film on a Saturday yeah. night before I went out somewhere with my mum and dad, like yeah. when I was a kid, and I was just amazed that I got to watch a film. I I, I had a bath, got dressed. And I managed to watch that whole film within the time it took my parents to get ready. And I was like, wow, that film was like 45 minutes long. And my mum was like, well, (laughs) not quite that. Not quite that. It (laughs) felt like it. But yes, anyway. 90 minutes, apparently. apparently. Hour and a half. Well, you've got to remember, you've got to remember a load of that hour and a half is going to be intro credits. And then um, and then the credits at the end. So that's like an hour and ten of storyline so yes yeah but yes anyway uh sorry <laughs> carry on carry on yes the, I, i've stayed away from the sequels that's fair enough i mean i i, I knew they were being but i knew they were made i think the, the third one was made without cory Haim because i think he'd passed away um right it was be, before or during or something something like that um so i mean uh, i the second one has him in it, I think. I'd, I'd be interested to see what it's like. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as good as the first one. I mean, I've seen... Um, oh, God. I'm losing my mind. I've seen the director, who's Joel Schumacher, talk Stop. about The Lost Boys. Yeah. Um, and his his love for him, him making this movie. So, um, it, it, is a, it is a really good movie. Um, but... Uh, it doesn't, it, like I said before, it doesn't make my top 10. Um, but Crazy. I can see why I can see why people love it. So, I mean, maybe if I'd seen it at the time, I would have been like, oh, this is amazing. But because of like the 10, 11 year gap, I'd seen other movies as well. So I was just like, yeah, this is good. But I mean, it's it's not my favorite movie. The soundtrack's good. I like the music to it. So, um, right. yeah. I mean, I would give this a solid maybe six or seven out of ten. Oh, really <laughs> yeah well, i suppose i suppose at least he's saying that you like it and you you know you, you you've, you've not really you've not really uh criticized it at all it's just it's just not it's just not really it, it's which surprises me actually not does it surprise me that you haven't criticized it because you, you're quite a positive guy but i mean it's the um it's the fact that you've said right you've got a great soundtrack you you know, uh, you've mentioned the director you've mentioned the cast um yes it's it's it, it's something a little bit different it's not fully horror it's not fully comedy it's not this it's not that you know, you've seemed quite upbeat about it but then i mean are, are you saying that six are you saying six is an average what well, when you say out of ten what's an average well, I mean, I would say five is average. Um, right. Okay. Six, six or seven is just above average. But, I mean, don't forget, I'd seen this as well after Buffy had come out. So, I mean, I was a big Buffy fan. Yeah, so, yeah. I think maybe that's what's influenced me as well. Because, again, vampires. But, I mean, I thought the, the vampires on, on The Lost Boys were cool. So, I mean, you know, to have Kiefer Sutherland in there as well. 
you know. <laughs> well, that's it. There's a big there's a big link here, isn't there? Because I feel like the the Lost Boy vampires influenced uh, yeah. Joss Whedon. Uh, oh, I, can, I can see that. Yeah, who obviously made um, Buffy the film to begin, you know, um, which which had Kiefer's dad in it. Um, yeah. Fun, you know, spookily yes, enough, and yeah. then and then all of a sudden, you know, it goes on to the series where they're obviously they've moved on from the eighties for the best part. Yeah. So, some of the yeah. <laughs> some of the some of the dress sense, you go like bloody hell. Oh, all right, guys, it's ninety six. Come on, um, <laughs> but yeah, for the best part, people have moved on. Um, but yeah, that that is there is that um, teen that that trendy teen uh, yeah. vampire thing going on, which. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I can imagine, I can imagine. I was going to say this later, but I'll say it now since you've brought it up. Um, excuse me. I can imagine grumpy thirty-somethings and upwards uh, <laughs> well, must have hated this at that, Ooh, and, you yeah. know, and viewed it as the twilight of their day. Yeah, you know, like what during the eighties, yeah, in the late eighties. Do anyone, anyone our age? You know, grumpy mm. assholes who have got a platform. You know, they, they'll have a, they'll have like, you know, some sort of pirate or college radio show, which was the, <laughs> you know, the their yeah. platform of choice in the day. Should we say? Oh, you know, just for the sake of argument. And sure. they're saying, okay, yeah, we've got the Danger Man <laughs> and Gaz and Sino. Um, because you just, I, I did the terrible American accent just because you just probably wouldn't get it in 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 the UK at the time. Um, no, but um you've got grumpy 30 somethings and, and upwards you hated this and viewed it as like i said like the twilight of their day because if you if you've grown up being a fan of of uh, of uh the vampire legend then you've seen like bella lugosi or you know, or you've seen um christopher yeah. daniels you know you, you you've seen all these yeah and you've read you've read bram stoker you're reading all you're reading and watching all these things and then all of a sudden you've got these trendy pretty twats turning up in <laughs> skinny jeans and tassels <laughs> and long hair yes. you know hairspray hair it's like like they're not vampires they're twats from one of these shitty hair metal bands what the fuck is got you've just ruined the vampire <laughs> And um, it's 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 more of an evolution, uh, but, and, and sadly, Twilight is has had the same effect. Oh, but it's God. it's it's I can't help thinking it's Ponzi. Whereas you know, whereas uh, you know, uh, Kiefer uh, and the and the like were quite yeah. were still were, were pretty badass and scary, weren't they? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. So that's I mean, that's that, that's something where that's, that, that's that really set them apart. I mean, there is still the danger there. There's something. Um, okay, for, for some of the vampires, for some of the depictions of vampires, they're not. They 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 are monsters. They're slick. Uh, head back. Uh, and, <laughs> and there's there's their own. They're, they're just well spoken assholes who bite you. But yeah. there is a. A sexual element to some depictions of Dracula, uh, where he is charming and beautiful, and um, just consume. You know, you're able to be consumed by him. You know, he he's. If you look at the legend, he is a lover. Um, you yeah. know, he he will. He's he's passionate, um, and yeah, he fo- you know, he follows his heart even to his detriment and. To the detriment of the rest of the world in the end, that he follows his heart. He is a romantic. And so I suppose that's always been part of it. And this is a thing, like there is something really kind of like this. Kiefer and the and the like are they're pretty set, they're pretty cool and sexy. I mean, yeah. there's nothing it's not like they went like, oh, we've got Kiefer here at the front, and then we've got like the, the spotty fat kid <laughs> like, <laughs> behind him. They're all like they're all like pretty slim, cool, sexy guys, and they're you know they 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 really um it, so in that respect they still they still follow the the vampire trend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think I, I didn't know the other actors who played them other than Alex Winter, so um, I wasn't too. I mean, I think they were just like meant to be like too muscly like teenage 
early 20s style vampires. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're all backup characters apart from, I mean, like Alex Winter, Alex Winter has got his own name. He's Marco. Yeah. So he he's he's David's right hand man, isn't he? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the one who gets killed, isn't he? When the when the Brock brothers go yep. into the uh, the cave. That's right. Yeah. So he's he's proper. Yeah. So Keith is like proper. What well, David's there? He's proper pissed off. Uh, I was um, yeah. and 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 when you say about they went into their lair and everything. There's there's something so fucking cool about that. It's so rebellious. It's like it really is finding the um. It really is, you know, the equivalent of finding a um, an abandoned house, and like you see, it, like it's the cliche six 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 spray painted on the wall and candles yeah. and empty beer cans. It's, it's kind of like that. And I was no more than seven, I'd say, when I when I first watched this. I was, I th- I'm pretty sure I was around a, a friend's house for a sleepover. Um, yeah. That's if memory serves. I could be wrong. I'll probably remember it another time. Going, oh, I was at home by myself. I, I, I can't quite remember, but right now I think I was at a sleepover. But I just remember thinking it was the coolest thing I had ever seen and that this could be... I, I actually, I'm pretty sure this is the thing that kick-started my love of the coast or, you know, okay. or a coastline. There, there is, on, on its day, there is a, a certain gothic or deadly romanticism to the sea and the shore from where one might watch the sea and i feel that the same sensitivity runs through the streets and the local architecture that lay local to that shore and it's as though something sinister has happened and that the the the, those sinister acts have permeated the architecture and the people so that everyone knows Everything is tainted. You could have a big fer- Ferris wheel with all the lights in it, screaming teenagers and everything, and everyone's having a great time. There's music and every- but but everyone still knows something. There's there's something wrong and dirty and scary about yeah. Santa Carla, uh, and and that kind of like I've always that really struck a chord with me. Uh, I've 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 seen it in other in other media's and everything and. Uh, yeah, you add that to discovering like round the twist as well as as a a, a young lad, um, yes. and you've got yourself a, a a young freak that discovers that sorry that loves the sea, and lighthouses and ghosts and smugglers and mm-hmm. vampires, and that hasn't changed. You know that mm-hmm. this kind of shit stays with you. I think like yeah, like you said, you didn't watch it until you were already an opinionated teenager. So you're like, yeah, I like it, but you know, yeah. Um, but this this is why I said that. Is it? I tell. You, is it my DNA? This is why I said I I love this film. Like Tim Capello, yeah, like the the guy who plays the saxophone, yeah, yeah. I love this. Like Tim Capello loves a baby oil drenched sax solo. <laughs> right, that's how that's much I love. Yeah, I, you that's love how... this movie as much as I love Christmas Vacation. <laughs> exactly. <what> you <laughs> <laughs> and um, I but. However, there cannot be light without dark, and they they, they cannot be excellence without shite. Right. And um, what I will say is, this film flirts. Ooh. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say um, you know, embraces both, but it definitely flirts with both. Yeah. Um, first of all, is the lack of a proper genre. Hmm. Now I wouldn't say that Lost Boys is really a horror. We you you've touched on this. I'd say right. it's, it's kind of like if I wanted to be really pretentious, I'd say that it's a cautionary pop culture sensitive tale of boys who aren't they aren't so much physically lost like the, the, the like the ones in J you know in Peter Pan. They're not physically lost, but they're emotionally lost. And although they seem powerful beyond belief. With, with with power, you know, with, with abilities that we can't fathom, yeah. they're actually prisoners of the film's dominant and kind of like he's. Uh, I'm trying to think of a word. Do, uh, clandestine. He's a, a oh. dominant clandestine antagonist. Um, yes. And the suggestion that perhaps being forever young isn't like uh, 
It's not like it's not like a poetic version of Dorian Gray. You know, being young forever isn't the isn't the uh, there's, there's a theme running through the 80s, where it's like, you know, living forever I mean, at a time when AIDS is killing millions mm. of people. You know, you've got people in the 80s saying like, yeah, you, you don't want to live forever. You don't you don't you don't want to die in your 20s from a horrible disease. But you don't want to live forever either. Um, no. But like, you know, it's, it's, it's eternal damnation. It's not glorious. It's not beautiful. Uh, no. But the thing is, like, yeah, and then I can hear someone going like, ah, so where do you find that in the video store, Gaz? Uh, it's like, <laughs> fuck me, try H for horror. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but it is a genre all of its own, I suppose. Fantasy. I mean, I've, I kind of liken it. Truth. Yeah, I, I kind of liken it to, like, and I know it's going to be tainted, but I'm going to say it's almost like Goonies for Grown Ups, but it's got vampires in it. Well, yeah, yeah. But this is the kind of stuff that I think Corey uh, Feldman's agent was like, he said, you know, just just look out for this kind of stuff. And Corey Feldman's yeah. agent was, I don't know who his agent was in the 80s, oh, but no. I, I want him for this show. <laughs> because that, whoever that was, that guy, that gal was smashing it. And yes. uh, and just got him some great films. I know what you mean. It's got this. It has the same. I don't know emotional resonance. I don't know. I think I'm just being too pretentious now. But I know what you mean about uh, you know trying to compare it to the Goonies. But I think you yeah. know uh, you know it's fantasy. I would say I don't know. Or what I would say is that there's too much com. Like you said, there's too much comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, to offset the fear. You know, there's too yes. much cool. Yeah. To really unsettle the viewer, we, you know, we're having too much fun to be to be freaked out. And whilst there is a message that there is danger in the most familiar things, and that death is never really that far from your doorstep, I think we all find ourselves far too enamoured with David and the other boys to be really yeah. afraid of. You yeah, know I mean, what I mean? I thought, like, they, I thought the scene where they attack those like surfer g- dudes. Um, from the tree and that that was quite intense as to oh, how, well, how uh, yeah. yeah so i think there's another scene similar to that as well um but i just thought you know they did that quite well but they didn't like they didn't they didn't overdraw on the on the gore and the blood they they, they did it for a bit but they didn't like over dramatize it and like show it on screen for like minutes it was like seconds and right exactly flashed at the next scene and then this is more yeah, so, but I mean, when when Kiefer turns to it, when he turns into a vampire, it's pretty pretty scary, you know. He's if you're a little kid watching that, you'd be freaked out by that. I would imagine. Oh yeah, no, so. it was it was like my yeah, my asshole was doing the five p fifty fifty p dance. Like oh, I right. I you know Kiefer is he's a he's a smashing actor. I know everyone knows that, but I think everyone yeah. just takes that for granted. Um, oh, yeah. And because he's kind of had a bit of a gap in between Jack Bauer and yeah. um, oh, what's that fucking White House one? I really liked it. What was it called? Designated so Desi- not, so not, uh, Survivor. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. In, in between Jack Bauer and being designated Survivor, there, there's a bit of a gap and he hasn't done the most amazing stuff since. And so I think a lot of people to kind of just go, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, great. You've done that. What else are you going to do? Well, well, fuck you. Fuck you. Go back and watch his old <laughs> stuff again. Because yeah. um, he, he was that, that when they're in the tree hiding, watching that, you know, you know, the their, their, their faces only lit by the fire. Um, that's scary as shit. You know, for a kid. Yeah. You know, and it's clever. It's clever work by uh, Joel Schumacher. Uh, I've not given him enough. Neither of us have given him enough credit so far. Well, a little bit, but I think that's excellently done. Like uh, you, Kiefer and Joel combined there, and I give Jason Patrick his due. He sold mm. it. You, you have to sell. You have to sell the reaction. The reaction to everything that happens is key. If if something really scary as shit happens and then they just turn around and go, oh my God, that's terrible. Then the, <laughs> the whole fucking scene is ruined. And I, I find yeah. that that's what's wrong with uh, a brilliant premise, like say Picard at the moment, right. 
I like I kind of on on Brandon of namely 90s uh, suggestion. I went and watched Picard series three because I yeah. kind of like I kind of farted on season two and like I don't want to watch it anymore. Um, right. I was really enjoying it. And then and then all of a sudden the writing was just <sighs> some of the responses to you can't you can't put a great quote or a, a, a great scene in and then the response be a load of wank. Like the response no. to the the original um the original uh you know words or or, or, or reaction has to be equal or better. And yeah. um and, and, and it doesn't it can't it can't do it. I think it's just modern writers just they're just so fixated on shit like the Avengers that they've lost it. But but Jason Patrick had it. He, he he's great he's a great facial actor where like he he'll react brilliantly facially to a situation. And he looks shit scared the whole time. Even when he's yeah. a vampire, he's shitting his pants. I love it. <laughs> yes. I yeah. think it's brilliant. However, like no matter how brilliant that is, though, I, I, I then come back down to earth, um, and because so you know Keith is really cool and I love him, and I have done from a young age. I thought always thought he's super cool. Mm. Um, so like I watched like um, Stand by Me, and then I watched yeah Lost Boys, um, and and Keith is so fucking cool. I immediately was just like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live by the seaside and ride a motorbike. Wow! I was, I just, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't not be like, have like a total like, uh, like I said, like seven years old. And I, I, if, if it's possible for a, a straight seven-year-old to have a man crush, <laughs> then I think I did. I was massively oh, like, yeah, like enough. he was a hero, a total hero of mine, of mine. But, um, but, um, so he, he was totally too cool to be scary and although i hadn't heard of joel schumacher before i had heard of stephen king and john hughes yeah. and lost boys again really just felt a collaboration between the two you know do you, right. do you see what i mean there like it, it was it was it was almost fun and witty enough to be yeah. a john hughes film but there's enough stephen king yes. in there to be scary and it yeah. felt kind of like a family film in a way yeah i can understand that yeah i mean apart from the scary like vampire side of it um <laughs> it, it, i mean i think that's why the two Corys were in it because i mean you, when you see the two Corys are in a movie um i think like cory feldman's like only like proper horror movie was like friday the 13th part four or whatever it was but i mean other than that his other movies were like either like family dramas or comedies so yeah and again like um, gremlins isn't a proper horror gremlins no no i forget about gremlins yeah gremlins is again much like i don't know it's it's a christmas horror movie but it's not really horror is it even though the gremlins are pretty i I remember as a kid watching gremlins and that warning at the end is like check under your bed and check in your wardrobe and i remember walking home from where we watched it and a friend's house and getting back into my room and just like checking under the bed. And cause I mean, when you're a kid, you watch it, you're, you're a bit freaked by these little, you know, gizmo was cute, but the rest of them were like, Oh God. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I mean, I can see, I can see your point is it, it could, it could be classed as a family movie. Um, I don't think my parents would have watched this movie with me as a kid, but <laughs> hey, hey, oh. <laughs> so, see, that's where I can kind of imagine. I mean, I can, I can imagine either one or both of your parents. I mean, I, I don't know them really well. I know your mum ever so slightly better yeah. um, than I do your dad. But I no. I can imagine, I, I don't know, if you put this on and said, right, okay, guys, we're doing a show <laughs> about this. We're doing a show about this. I need a second opinion from someone that isn't Gaz. <laughs> Tell me... Tell me what you think of it. And I can imagine them not minding it. I, like, I can't imagine like your mum and dad getting halfway through this film and going like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I yeah. can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't, um, your mum and dad are pretty cool. They're pretty, yeah, they're, they're pretty laid back. 
Um, they're pretty laid back, cool people. Uh, I just can't imagine them going, I'm sorry, Dave, this is utter shite. I, I just cannot <laughs> watch it anymore. You know what I mean? Like I can, uh, I can imagine there's bits of this film that they go, that they, they could, that they could enjoy. But I mean, I mean, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Like, have I got this completely wrong? Is this, is this just something that you could never imagine them watching? I mean, <laughs> I mean, my mum's not a horror fan, so um, it's possible she may enjoy it more so. Um, I would imagine my dad would sit through it, not saying anything at the end of it, but I, oh, I didn't really like that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. He <laughs> did sit through it and tell me at the end. I'm like, okay, great. Thanks. Um, uh, you never know. He, he may like it, but um, I, I don't know. Um, He's going to be one of those 30-something and upwards who went, Oh, this is utter fucking shit. Why what have they done to the vampire to the vampire genre that I was saying about? Yes, yeah, probably. Uh, all right, there you go. Okay. Uh, um oh god, I, I mean, was did your say parents something. watch this movie and like it or let's see, when was it? 87. Yeah. Uh say so they went out Ben. Oh, I can't be bothered to do the maths. I'm too tired. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to find something on my phone because I, I, I had a little bullet point of something I want to talk about, and I can't do maths. And uh, at the that. same time, no, it's <laughs> 21. Yes, loved it. It's 21. Great. They were 21. So I imagine at 20, because um, if, 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 if I meet someone who's 21 now, I'm not going to say, oh, we're 21. You've got to be a fucking knobhead. But, you know, I'm just saying, like, you know, get, you know, people who, younger, younger people tend to be quite, um, enthusiastic about things that are um, you know new and fresh and everything, and this is certainly new and fresh. And it had like you know it had some of the more recognisable actors, even like some of the more even some of the the uh, the, the older actors were more recognisable. Um, yeah. So I, I can imagine I can imagine my mum and dad liking this i certainly know for a fact that my mum can uh, she i don't think this she's like you this would not be in her top 10 but i right. but i reckon if if i because she's moved recently and say she's not going to see me for you know she's moved to a different county so right. if i if i was to turn around and say right i'm leaving the girls at home i've had enough i just need to get away i'm going to come round. And we're going to eat good food and drink lots of wine. And we're going to watch the Lost Boys over, yeah. you know, over Saturday and Sunday. What would you say? She would, she would go, brilliant. Sounds like a right. great way to spend the time. My boy, a good film, for good food, good wine. Right, brilliant. We'll do that. And she'd watch it and she'd go, yeah, that was really good. I really enjoyed that. Is it her? Is it the kind of thing that she would want to watch? Right. Given the choice? No. My dad... I can imagine my dad at the time enjoying it, but I can imagine my dad now going like, "What's this fucking shit? I've never <laughs> liked that. I was never, I was never young. The only time when I was young is when I was six, and after that, I never liked anything. Yeah, I, I just can't imagine him getting on board with it. I, I'd like, to, I'd like to, I would like to like give him props and you know for him to turn around and say, "Oh yeah, no, actually, I, I didn't mind it." The, like yeah. the guy likes Inspector Morse and Poirot. Yeah, you know, and he oh, likes okay. a little bit of twenty four. I can't imagine yeah. him. I can't imagine him ever being on board with this. Yeah, you know, and they—they no. they were. Yeah. That was kind of that was almost their their target audience. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> that was their target wow. audience. It's like mm, oh, shit. Um, I think it's because it's not a full horror. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it has been said, I was reading a lot of the criticism of it, and it's been said that the film is more of a comedy than a horror, and that the finale yeah. is like the epitome of funny. Um, right. <laughs> and I can I can I can kind of get on board with that to a degree. Like there's that there, there's that bit at the end. Right. Okay, hang on. Right. Now Max is a terrific character. Okay. Yeah. I love Max. There's a guy, I don't know how old he's meant to be in the film. I'm guessing he's like what, our age or a little bit older. Possibly, uh, yeah. I, I can't quite tell. I can't, ev everyone everyone aged a little bit older in the 80s and the 90s. So I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, but he dresses relatively young, I'm guessing. So he, yeah. the kids will keep coming into his video store. Um, but he's 
you know, but he has some weight as a character. And I, that that's down to the absolutely fucking magnificent Edward Herman, who I think yeah. is a huge loss to acting. You know, he's no longer with us, sadly. He's brilliant. I he loved him and everything he was in. He just, yeah. he could just flip between, um, between, uh, you know, hopeless and maniacal <coughs> in the blink of an eye like literally he could breathe in as a loser excel as a fucking asshole he's that he's a real actor um and, and the speech that he gives uh, as uh lucy and he come ha- come back to the the family home after their date um yeah. it, it, the speech he gives after he sees David dead and yeah. he removes his glasses and it's eerily gripping. And I was just, I'm moved when I watched it mostly because I know what's coming. I think it, I think the speech is, is more moving once you know what's coming. Um, mm. But then all of a sudden, and it's not, it's not Edward's fault, but uh, this, his turn at the end is comical. Like <laughs> it's like, it was like and he turns away and then he turns back with like the worst contacts, yeah. the worst teeth. I don't know if they just run out of money or something. <laughs> um, yeah. But like he may as well have turned around with a pair of like springy eyeglasses on. You know what I mean? You know, like yeah. you know the, the, the glasses where they got springs coming up from the eyes. I, it just it just felt like that. And <laughs> and his death is and this it's things like this where I can imagine people our age going like fuck's sake. I put up with yeah. it. I put up with the twats and the skin tight trousers until now. But this is just a step too far. It's stuff like this. Like, like his death is an absolute waste of a great character and the chance for an unforgettable ending. So just just a few points. OK, so bear with me. A, why is grandpa driving his car through his French windows? OK, there's <laughs> there's, there, there's no proof. That there's a head vampire stood right there no. that needs a good staking, right? B, why did Schumacher, who had just completed an amazing, let's call it one hour and 20 of film, decided that a slapstick giant steak point of view <laughs> over five seconds was a great way to finish? Uh, C, why the fuck was Max still screaming after he'd exploded? I get ah, but then look, bang, bang, bang. You can still hear him going ah. That I'm pretty sure your larynx is <laughs> fucked, mate. I'm pretty sure you're dead already. Rah! But post scream, oh yes, yes, yes. Jizz, rinse and repeat. I love that. It's 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 great. The collapsing chimney, the flowing hair, goggles, dust and wind blowing and whistling like a nuclear explosion. There's there's coughing and spluttering and awkwardness and confusion, tears and joy and like yes, this fucking works. Like holy fuck, I love this. Every film where they've cheated death should end like this. I love it. That's magnificent is 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 i know i know um films aren't made um in uh uh in, in order you know they, they go from beginning to end you know at the start of the middle whatever they don't always you know they don't go in chronological order but it just feels like it feels to, it felt like to me like joel schumacher did a great film fucked up for 10 for, for like 30 seconds they went oh shit i better make the rest of this great um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I said it or that. Um, but like, <laughs> but, and then even with Grandpa's shocking closing statement, which was oh, God. brilliant, That's... brilliantly, yeah, great, wasn't it? I hear the enthusiasm in your voice. You know I mean, the worst ending of a movie ever, and the way it ended is like, oh God, what is, what is, you know what what is it? this? But just the way he's just like, oh, I always knew that there was one thing I hate about this town is too many vampires or something. And it just ends. I'm like, OK, well, fair enough. Well, I, just, I, it, really? OK, go on, go on. No, no, I was just going to say, I just I just I wasn't a big <laughs> it was kind of anticlimactic. I'm like, oh, fair enough. He just killed this the head vampire for, for a massive because I mean, again, oh, you, you say you say your point about it's like 
you know, or, you know, there was he was no proof that he was the head vampire, but I would imagine that he's probably had his suspicions for his whole his whole life of living in the town, and I think he could, you know, guess who yeah. were the vampires and who weren't. So I'm assuming he. He was just around because he was bang, banging in fence posts wasn't he, around the garden. So I just imagine that that was the reason why he did that. But um, I don't know, it just seemed weird to just end it that way in terms of like, oh. he disappears he disappears into the, like another room. Yeah, not answering kitchen. his daughter. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he, she suddenly just turns around and says that. And then the credits was raw. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's an interesting way to leave it. So. But that's the thing. I, 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 I before i have been like you have been critical of that ending um but haven't gone back to it like i was thinking like oh really oh yeah grandpa's so clever like oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah one thing i couldn't stand about living here is all the damn vampires yes <laughs> excuse me sorry um but yeah like I, but then as i've got older i've gone like okay how the fuck else is he supposed to is he supposed to finish it um yeah but, but I think what I really like about it is that the only light is from the fridge where he goes out and he gets something to drink. And then it goes back to the faces of, of Lucy, Michael and shit. I can't remember Corey Haim's character's name. Um, uh... <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, God. oh, dear. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> My own brother is uh, Sam. Sam. Of course it is. My own brother, a goddamn shit sucking vampire. So I can remember that, <laughs> but I can't remember his goddamn name. Um, yeah. So yeah, there, there's Sam and Michael and Lucy, and they're just there. Now, I, I quite like that. They're not overacting because as as he, you, he clearly closing the fridge off shot as, yeah, and the light disappears and uh, so there's their faces and they're not overacting they're not trying to be the star of the last scene they're just numb to the mm. awful statement that they've just heard it's like yes. what, what okay so i i have had I, like you i have had my issues with this but if 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 the if grandpa knew uh if grandpa obviously knew about the vampires all along but if they turn up in Santa Carla, he starts going, oh, you don't want to live here. There's loads of vampires yeah. here. That would have been, yeah. it would have been shite. So obviously, you know, that he oh, yeah. you can't, you can't be the crazy old coot telling the family that you haven't seen him forever, that there's vampires here. Right. I, I, so, so I, in my mind, now I've grown up, I, I quite like that. He stumbles as he gets out of his truck. Lovely. I like that. We, you know, I don't like all this heroes don't look behind them as the explosion goes off. Fuck off. If you're going to blow <laughs> something up, you you run for cover, you twat. I hate it. When, like, I hate it when the hero just like, you know, you know just, just walks around like they're fucking Teflon. Fuck off. Um, I was like, he stumbles as he gets out because, you know, he's, I don't know, in his 60s or whatever. You know, and he like kind of like shuffles and he's like at one point i think he's got his his head in his hand he's he's absolutely fucked uh, i like yeah. that I, I i think that's quite good i can but i can understand i can understand i think i hated it when i was a kid so i can understand why you're like nah, nah, <laughs> bloody grandpa it's not, it's not the it's not the best ending in my opinion or the best way to end a movie but hey ho it's but then, but then how, how how after that huge explosion and everyone's crying, and every, and there's a happy ending. How how do you just fade to end? Yeah, but with just no explanation. But just with no explanation there. of how Grandpa knew. Oh, I guess maybe I get. Yeah, I get your point. <laughs> yeah, but that's I that's the so. only, yeah that's the only reason why I'll stick up for it is because it's taken a lot of watching it picking at it because i'm the one that picks everything and i like to pick holes in everything and it's taken it's taking years and years of me you know being critical whilst also loving something to to see how that's the only way they could really finish it yeah. um if, if grandpa hadn't had killed max then yeah and it had been someone if it had been michael for example then you know that would have been 
you know, then that you know a fade a fade to black after the big explosion might have been a, an okay way to finish it, but yeah. I don't know. Then you might have gone like, "What the fuck happens now?" I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's it's a tricky one. I wouldn't like to be. I I I wouldn't like to make films as much as I thought <laughs> I would when I was a kid because. Then you get you're gonna get uh, two knobbers on a on a podcast complaining about the uh, <laughs> masterpiece. That is, you know, this is the best film he's ever done. Probably, I'll say Joel Schumacher. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, we could, I, I think we could do you know we could do an episode about Joel Schumacher and all the you know and like you know his his top ten films or whatever. But uh, just saying, I. I mean, certainly Batman's not fucking in there, is it? Fuck me. Batman forever, no. Yeah, Jesus Christ, that's terrible. So I'm just saying, you know, it'd be, you know, that's a, a it, this is probably his best one, but. Um, I'd probably say, actually, yeah, just looking at his list there, I mean, St. Elmo's Fire is okay. Oh, that's uh, good. But I think that's, I'd say that's probably number two. A Time to Kill was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe that's number two actually. Oh. Falling Down is a great movie. That is, oh fucking hell. Michael Douglas. <laughs> oh no, uh, that's now number two. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> I do love that film. I remember I great think movie. I was like I think that was like watching that was one of the first times I was allowed to stay at home by myself and my mum and dad went out and I was allowed to stay at home without a babysitter. I think I was right. watching TV in my bed, right. watching, yeah, watching TV, and uh, I had a brand new TV. The first TV yeah. I had was black and white, if you can fucking believe that. Um, oh, yeah. And um, I think I had a brand new TV. It wasn't it was fucking old. It was probably about three, third or fourth hand. <laughs> to me, it was brand new, and it was colour. And yeah. I think I remember watching Falling Down on my in my mind my brand new tv i can still feel the weight of the buttons on my fingers when i push them up the, the clunk as they go in yes. yeah. and um oh god damn that's a good film that's a really yeah. really good film shit oh okay hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> i just want to do uh i just want to do uh joel schumacher <laughs> hello let's find on <laughs> subjects Ba-da-ba-do. Joe Schumacher. Okay, right. Um, right, we, we better wrap this up, but there is one last thing that I want to say. Okay. Um well, I say one last thing. There's quite a lot, but oh. I just better, <laughs> but um I I read somewhere online, you know, uh, about the, the criticism at the time. Uh, the, the film brilliantly portrays vampirism as a metaphor for the kind of mythic male bonding that resists growing up commitment and especially marriage um, and that it's a horrifically dreadful vampire teen exploitation now i cannot agree with either of those statements fully i understand where they're coming from fair enough you've got your opinion i'm not gonna i'm not gonna scream and shout at you and cancel you or whatever you know fair play but there's a there's a kernel of truth in there and i think that's been adopted by modern tv writers um in that teens and young people are generally written as the heroes which is fine that's okay but that by that you know that all means that these characters must remain exactly who they are no matter how much time passes okay so like their clothes to a degree their opinions certainly and their friends are imprisoned in a moment in time like someone's taken a, a photograph and like a, a drop has fallen down in front of the lens and you can it's just, it's just like that it's just like that you can see your friend's face in this raindrop and you just click and you it's just there it's captured in a moment in time and that will never ever change and that's how this how these shows feel uh we'll use uh the vampire diaries for an example but you know there are loads of other fa- yeah, that's spooky that I'm using the vampire diaries, but you know, um fuck, that's really not a good example. But there's, <laughs> a, there's other there's other ones. Um, but they may celebrate birthdays or embark on new careers and their family may 
divorce, depart or die, but they themselves never really truly change or expand or grow. And it, it kind of like ends up perpetuating the mindset that growing into fully fledged adults who have kids, struggle to pay the rent and actually change their opinions um, <laughs> on things is to be avoided like the plague. And it's a form of vampirism, you know, and you know, which which we've established. Um, and unless you're key for Sutherland, it's bad. Um, <laughs> and I'd say our generation understood that living forever is scary. You know, change yeah. is inevitable. And key for Sutherland is cool as fuck. OK, <laughs> that, that's the things that we, we get from this film. You know, we, yeah, we you know, our generation got from this film. Keith is a sexy, cool motherfucker. Living forever is scary. Change is inevitable. And that's, you know, that's just a couple of the reasons why The Lost Boys is awesome. And, and you know, you know what? Like, and so are we. I don't just mean you and I. I mean, like, everyone who can understand that, you know, no matter how cool and sexy and awesome the vampires are in this film, we don't really want them to die. We love them. They're like, they're like just we, we kind of grew up wanting to be them. We didn't grow up wanting to be the Frog Brothers. Yeah, we uh-huh. like the Frog Brothers, but we want to grow up to be vampires because they're so goddamn cool. However, <laughs> um, you know, we realise that things change, and that's okay. Like sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but we realise, and it's okay. We we realise that we can't stay in one place in one time. We'll look back and we'll enjoy, but we won't try and drag. I was going to say, we won't drag it into the modern day with us kicking and screaming. Says the fucking <laughs> co hosts of a podcast about the 80s and 90s. <laughs> but like, I don't, I mean, like in every other, every other sense, we don't try and, we don't, I'm not wearing like, you know, a tasseled leather jacket. No, not tonight anyway. No, not tonight. <laughs> that's that's usually just on a Friday night. Yeah. That's just for Ellie. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I just want to say like, yay us, Danger. Yay us. Right. And and if all of our Insaniacs and Danger heads who can like enjoy the past and enjoy being young, but also just like look back and not try and like, oh, I have to remain young forever. Um, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. love the fact, I love the fact that we're not that, you know, we're not the Vampire Diaries generation, that we're the Lost, Boy, the Lost Boys generation. We, we we loved yeah. it. We enjoyed it. We thought it was cool. Um, but ultimately, we're just going to keep it in our heart and then move on. We don't actually want to be the fucking Lost Boys, not like yeah. other generations that have come after us. So um, I'm sure generations after us have got all the, you know, got their, their um, have got their, their, their positive points and things that they're better at us at. But yeah. um, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to everyone who 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 watched this film who listens to this podcast and and realizes that yes you know that you know the past is amazing we love it and we revere it revere it and we um uh, you know we worship it and, and say we we realize how wonderful it is but you know we don't try and drag it into the into the present and into the future kicking and screaming uh to the detriment of our lives and the lives of everyone around us yeah, so you don't uh, see, you don't have the people watching it going, "Oh, I wish they remade this. It'd be great with the search and such in it." It's like, no, let's just leave it as it is. <laughs> leave it back exactly. where it was. Exactly. Doesn't need to be remade. And it's if a it, I, yeah. I, I'm not one, and I'm glad you said that because you've just you've just made me think of something. Oh, I am not one for a guy. Get emails from uh, change dot org dot uk whatever it's called which is like you know uh, petitions in the uk right. for fucking awful things that happen you know so you, you say oh well, you know someone's been arrested for something that you know um yeah for protesting something and rah 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 rah, rah and, you, you, and you sign a petition yeah. you send it on to your friends and you know for the best part they're, they're, there's really good causes and I, I can get on board with that um yeah but there's a lot of shit on there where it's like, oh, someone's not allowed to eat butter on a Wednesday. Oh, I think we should sign a petition. <laughs> no, we should shut the fuck up. You're ruining it. Um, and so I, I, I don't go on there. Like I look at things. I have to say I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a shit. I, 
I stay away. I don't want to change the world anymore. I had that in my teens and my twenties where I want to change the world. I don't want to do, I don't want to get on that anymore because ultimately it can be quite depressing when things don't go your way. And I've got other things to throw my emotional energy into, like being a good dad and being a partner and, and this. And, um, but what I will say, if I saw something tomorrow that said oh yeah they're gonna make they're gonna remake the reboot the lost boys i would fly out to america <laughs> and i would piss in the mouth of the fucking asshole yeah. who thought it was a great idea to reboot the lost boys i would shit in their eyes and i'd piss in their mouth and i would <laughs> i would i would gladly go to prison for it they'd like they'd leave this the fuck alone because yeah. it's because a reboot has the potential to end up being another fucking Twilight, doesn't it? Yes, it does. One hundred percent. Anyway, on that note, on that note, I'll say eight point uh, eight point nine. Oh. So you'll say what six point five? So we're between six. And seven. I'll give it a seven. Give it a okay, seven. You give it a seven. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it an eight point nine. Um, uh, depend if I'm drunk, it will be a nine point three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely magnificent film. If you haven't seen it before, do yourself a favor, go watch The Lost Boys. Um, pick holes in it. Um, yeah. Make sure you make sure you you properly you know, review. It. Don't just don't just go. Oh, well, Gaz said. Um, well, and, well, and don't well, shit on it just because Dane says. Well, oh, well, Dane said. You know. You know, give us your honest opinion. We'd like to hear from you about it. Um, but yeah, that's got that's got to be the end of the chat now because um, Gaz and Danger are getting sore throats. Right now, I said I, I tell you what I will say before we go. Actually, uh, till we get to the next segment, I said to Danger before we started over WhatsApp, I went, Danger. I've got a surprise for you. And he, he and <laughs> immediately within about thirty seconds went. You've booked Keith Sutherland on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Um, no. But um, no, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Sadly, that would have been amazing. That, that would have been. been that would have been up there with uh, with Joey Kramer. That's like that's the two yes. legends of my childhood. I think I think my head would have fucking exploded if I'd got <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith Sutherland. Um but it's and <laughs> danger's gonna shout at me off uh whilst we have a little break here and i'm sorry but for one week only until our next special it's the return of pod pickers i <laughs> said that tiny little laugh <laughs> that's how that, that's how angry danger is he was like well, you didn't tell me about this you fucking prick then pod pickers is back for one week only until our next special i just had to bring it back because i've been loving uh i've been loving the uh the statistics on a uh, yeah, on a uh, spreaker so um right everyone go and have a wee get a cup of tea a cup of tea. Have a wee. Get a cup of tea and a biggie. Come back and get comfy, and we will see you in a few. Here we go. Pod pickers. Pod pickers. Pod pickers. It's time for pod pickers. Pod pickers. Oh. Podpickers. Hey there, Podpickers. Your favourite geolocation statistics segment is back again. And this time, it's a countdown of the top 20 cities listening in from around the globe throughout the year of 2023. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pod fans of all ages, let's see who made the top 20. In at number 20, it's all about the magic in Orlando. Number 19, everybody's favourite fringe, Edinburgh. Number 18, raise a glass to everyone at Off the Record, Washington. Number 17, it's Salt Lake City, Utah. 
Ta. Number 16. Their name is Sweet Chin Music to Our Ears. It's San Antonio. Number 15. Ooh. It's the cousin of Clive River. It's Carol Stream. Number 14. Woo! It's Flair Country. Charlotte. Number 13. We won't have a problem as long as you love me. Houston. Number 12. Jump into your pink Cadillac and drive on down to Sacramento. Number 11. JR is tuning in from his hospital hospital bed. Dallas. <laughs> Number 10. He sends one of yours to the hospital. You send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. Number nine. Rising from the flames. Phoenix. Number eight. Jimi Hendrix rides again. And his ghost. It's Woodstock. Number seven in Dublin's fair city where the girls are so pretty. Number six. Party in this city when the heat is on. Miami. Number five, can you hear me at the back? I can hear you. It's Sheffield. Number Fuck four. <laughs> Number four, of course, it's Southampton. Number three, war is declared and battle come down. It is London. Number two, the Doctor Who service station of the universe. It's Cardiff. Oh. But at number one for 2023, it is the city of angels, Los oh. Angeles. Two times in a row, Los Angeles. Wow. <sighs> Nothing against Los Angeles, but here I was hoping that one day you'll be like, Clapton on fucking sea. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. I went looking through the whole <laughs> of the UK and no twat from Clapton on sea is oh. listening. I just, I'm just going to have to get the train down there and listen to an episode just so, <laughs> just so we can get, so just so I can say, Clapton on fucking sea. <laughs> oh, man. Friend of the show, Tim who um, he works at Ordnance Survey, which does in the UK, uh, does all the maps. And occasionally he will scroll past Clapton on Sea. And he's like, <laughs> and he says Clapton on fucking Sea to himself. It's just, and any, any, of, any of the listeners that have been listening in from the, uh, from the very early dates, they'll, um, they'll know all about that. Or, and, and you know, I, I want, I kind of want to turn this into a, um, a really low budget welcome to Wrexham thing where right. um you know, you know, loads of people around the world just go to Wrexham because right. you know because of the program i just i just want to keep saying clapton on fucking c and people yes. end up going to clapton on c that would be amazing but uh, but but we need to pay tribute to the two time in a row winner los angeles Absolutely. and uh, if you're if you're listening which i know you are all Clearly. those Hollywood producers are listening in, trying to get their ideas for remakes and reboots and stuff. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. Get in touch with us, uh, because I will ban you from any further pod pickers until you do. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't. No. But um, we're interested in who's listening to us uh, from L.A., um, and why, after being uh, number one, uh, two times in a row uh, I can't understand why no one from LA Is getting in touch with us uh, I, I'm guessing it's is it pro It's privacy concerned celebrities isn't it Probably what, yes Of course <laughs> Of course yes. oh, It all makes sense now Right well okay. Well, Miss Stone, Mr Depp um, Who I <laughs> happen to know do I'm pretty sure they both live in LA um, And the rest of you uh, Get in touch instead of Instead of like sitting around uh, your friend's uh, front room on a Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday or a Wednesday listening to this, um, you know, get in touch. Get in touch. Absolutely. And uh, again, let us know uh, what you want to hear more of or less of or just to say hi. Or if it's, uh, you know, anyone, anyone at all um, in, in the Los Angeles area, uh, we don't give a fuck who you are. You are amazing because you're an insaniac 
or a danger head. We don't give a fuck if you uh, if you push a mop around or if you're a millionaire or anywhere in between. We don't give a fuck because you listen to us. And that makes yes. you damn fucking amazing. So, with incredibly good taste. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, please get in touch. Um, that is at T-I-D-R-P-I-N-B-O-X. T-I-D-R-P inbox at gmail dot com. Right now, I said to Dange that I would not fuck around and take ages. But I, I do I just have to say thank you, Cardiff, London, Southampton. Great to see Sheffield in there. Yeah. Great to see. It, it, it means it gives me it gives me the opportunity to say, can you get me in the back? Because that's <laughs> one of Dangerous's favourite things to say. Um, yeah. Long time, long time badass is Miami, and uh, obviously uh, Dublin as well. Woodstock disappeared for the longest time, but now they're back. Uh, yeah. They disappeared for so long that my phone doesn't remember right doesn't remember writing my autocorrect doesn't remember writing Jimi Hendrix rides again. Oh. It, that's how long you've been gone. Um, I think um, uh, Phoenix has been gone for a long time as well, but like coming back, it's a uh, very retro, very old school at Chicago, still hanging on in there. Um, thank you to Aaron for uh, spreading the word, passing the pod, and getting it out there. Um, thank you for you know it's it's been passed so far and wide in chicago so we love you man thank you so much uh, and everyone to everyone that listens and continues to pass the pod uh dallas i mean you're a little bit lower down than you than you usually are but um you just keep on going don't you god bless you god bless you i love it we've actually got an episode lined up where we, we want to talk about dallas uh, so that's going to be bloody amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah. I would like you know, it'd be great if, if uh, the people of Dallas get to listen to our episode about Dallas. Um, <laughs> first time in for Sacramento, fair play, well done. We love you for it. Houston again, a little bit higher up than usual, but you're in there. Uh, Charlotte, not been around for the longest time, but you made a comeback. I love it. You realised, you, know, you listen, you, um, all these ones that disappeared and have come back, I'm guessing you've gone, um, like I've done with Quickly Kevin, which is a great podcast, have caught up with all the episodes and then gone, oh, I can't be bothered to listen week by week. I just want to binge. They've disappeared <laughs> and they've come back and you've binged again. So you, ah, you guys are cool. Thank you. Uh same with Carol Stream, San Antonio, and it's great to have Salt Lake City back as well. Washington, hardly ever in the top 20, but it's great to see you fight your way back in, in the middle of doing all that important work and you being uber cool. You take time out to listen to a couple of bellends from the south coast of England. Um, Edinburgh, the Scots don't famously do not like the English, and yet you're in the no. top 20 fucking legends and yeah. thank you to orlando who i do believe have never made it into the top 20 before and yet here you are 2023 smashing in there i mean to be fair um number 21 i think is quite uh you're quite far ahead but there's a big gap between 20 and 21 so well done orlando you didn't scrape in um i saw you i saw the stats and i was like oh Bosh, sexy. So, uh, well, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Right, and we've got to, we've got to push on. I can't keep waffling. Um, I can't even let Dange have anything to say because otherwise, uh, I'm going to keep the poor bastard on until uh, the wee hours of the morning. So we're going to shoot on to the next segment. Dange, I forget. I'm, I'm so, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Now we've put pod pickers <laughs> in. I don't remember what's up next. Well, wow, that's easy to remember. It's going to be Ask Dangerous. Yes. Ask Dangerous Day. Ask Dangerous Day. Stuff about the old days. Yes, he's got the questions, Dave's got the memories, maybe not his fault, but you dream of you, yeah.
Oh, hi there. I didn't hear you knock. Come on in and warm yourself up by the fireplace. Pour yourself a drink and settle back and listen to another delightful Ask Dangerous segment. I couldn't figure out why you couldn't give me what everyone else needs. I shouldn't let you kick me when I'm down, my baby. I find out everybody know that you've been using me. I'm surprised you let me stay around. One day I'm going to lift the cover and look inside your heart. We've got a level before we go and tear this love apart. There's no fight you can't fight. This battle of love with me, you win again. So little time, we do nothing but compete. There's no life on earth. No other could see me through. You win again. Some never try, but if anybody can, we can. I'll be, I'll be following you. Oh girl, oh baby, I shake from now on. I'm going to break down your defences one by one. I'm going to hit you from all sides. Lay your fortress open wide. Nobody, nobody stops this body from taking you. You better beware, I swear. I'm going to be there one day when you fall. I could never let, cast, let you cast aside the greatest love of all. Oh, baby, we always win again on this show. And we're going <laughs> through the countdown of the greatest 80s and 90s UK number ones. So let's throw it over to our resident tune matcher, Dr. Frank and Gaz, to find out what matchups he has in store for us this week, shall we? You won't believe this. I love that tune cool. matcher. I love that. You would not believe You know how in the last couple of weeks, I'll say Frank and Gaz, and then some kind of cool lyric very quickly. Yes. This week is Frank and Gaz. There's no life on earth. No earth <laughs> could see me. To... We're fucking. We did the same song. <laughs> wow. <Okay. Yeah. laughs> you win again. Fuck. That's amazing. And I was. You know what? I only picked that one because I was watching Taskmaster last night and Frankie <laughs> Boyle was on there and he did. A BG Ouija board for, yes. some, for for the show. I was like, and it just what, that's spooky, isn't it? Ouija yes. board aside, the fact that we chose the same song. <laughs> you started <laughs> saying the lyrics. I was like, I, I don't understand. What's what, what, uh, uh, what's happened? Because I was going to do do John Cicada, and I was like, no, 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 no. You win again. <laughs> oh my god. We've become. It's taken. It's taken a time. It's taken some time. Danger and I are now finally one person. It's taken 143 episodes or something like that. 44. <laughs> uh, we are Danger Gaz. <laughs> and Gazarus. <amazing>. Gazarus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, each week. Fuck, that's, that's blown my mind. Each week, <laughs> delve to the mind. That isn't blown of Dangerous to determine the greatest 80s and 90s UK chart number one ever. This week, I'll give Dange 10 matchups and he has to choose who is the superior tune and therefore will progress to the next round. Now, some big hitters have gone home already and it's only going to get more controversial and more exasperating for me. But, 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 this is Ask Dangerous. He is mighty and his word is final. So you can play along at home and see whether you agree with him. But just remember, he doesn't care. No doubt. So, pod fans, hold on to your wrinkly bits. Matchup one. Okay, so matchup one is Stand By Me by Benny King oh. versus A Groovy Kind of Love by Phil Collins. Oh. Oh. It's round three. Round three's a bitch, isn't it? If round three's a yeah. bitch, how is, you know, how's round four going to be? Even bitchier. <laughs> I Bitch, mean, the man in a tap fin office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, a groovy kind of love. <laughs> Phil Collins is a great song. 
Oh, but Stand By Me, Buddy King, the 87 or 86 re-release for the film. I love that. I love the movie and I love the song. Oh, Phil Collins is a, is a UK institution. He is. Is it, is it his best song that he's ever done? I don't think it is. Uh, no. uh, but does it stand up against? Does it stand up against Benny King? He's oh. asking all the right questions. Oh God, it's taken him a hundred and forty something episodes. This is it. Now he's now now he's got it. He's fucking got <laughs> it, hasn't he? Now he's asking the right questions. We love these questions. He's I mean, asking think, himself. Yeah, I think it doesn't. I think. Benny King has to go through just purely because it's a better song. That was my favourite. That was my favourite fucking uh, response of yours ever. Like really? you, were, like, it's like that was a one man interview. I was like, <laughs> was a one man twenty second interview. I was like, I don't know. Tell me more. Keep talking. <laughs> oh. I loved it. It was like Jonah Hill where he does that thing where he's like shaking his shaking his hands. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant fantastic right okay that's stand by me by benny king knocking out a groovy kind of love all i have to do yeah, it's gone home all you have to do is yeah. go home phil right <laughs> match up two this is a biggie oh do they know it's christmas by band-aid oh. yeah. versus oasis don't look back in anger. Ooh. Now I'm not an Oasis fan, but I do like I oh I, I recognize the magnificence of this song. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that, that's me saying that. Oh. But on the other hand, tough one. it's fucking band-aid. Yeah. The original band-aid was the best band-aid. Uh the 89 one was just an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone since yeah yeah oh. it's it's it's, it's trick i i do i know what i would do just on principle and i'm mm. sure that people were going oh fuck off guys um but it, it it's got nothing to do it's got nothing to do with my stance on Blur versus Oasis, which is a great episode, I think, because it's the first time that you and I really disagreed on an ep- on an episode. We, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't very good at leading the show, and you weren't very good on telling me to go fuck myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, at least on show, you are in person, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um, I think that's the first show where we disagreed, and and that that was a really considering we were two inexperienced bellends that was a great <laughs> show and i i really encourage people to go back and to and to listen to ones like blur versus oasis and michael jackson and stuff like that and really good ones where danger and i disagree even though we don't really know what we're doing good stuff <laughs> um, yes. but but you know but it, and if you're from the uk it, it makes a huge difference doesn't it because i think um yeah we've spoken to brandon and andrew and I don't, I can't remember what they said now. No, no. Did they say that Band Aid travelled well? Did it? Did did it go across? I think did... initially, I think initially they got it confused with an American style one uh, that right. came out. Oh, other world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if it did travel that well. Um, because I think no. initially they were, they thought we were talking about we are the world, <laughs> and See? Brandon had to be like, no, no, they're, they're talking about Band Aid from '84. So, right, okay. So now this is the problem, isn't it? So people who live, I don't, I don't know how well we're just talking America there. I don't know how yeah. well it travelled across the rest of the world. Um, I know in Africa where we were, you know, in at certain African countries when we were trying to help, they actually fucking hated it. Uh, yeah. because it's yeah because of the whole like white savior thing it's like well you pricks right. caused this in the first place fuck off yeah. well we, we can sort it ourselves go do one um yeah. not everyone did but i know there's a big helping of that um whereas i know that oasis don't look back in anger i know that that was a like um a big like prom song for a lot of people back yes. in the 90s and i don't again i don't know how it was received the rest of the world over but i imagine it did pretty well 
So I think the rest of the world over thinks that Don't Look Back in Anger is probably a better song. But for us, you go back to your childhood and you, you hear that, that it's Christmas time. That yeah. just makes you just want to like stand up and screech like a banshee and, and, and say, feed the world. You love it. It's It's powerful. It's amazing. And it means more to us in the uk than i think it yeah. does to the rest of the world it's 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 like a three lines people don't get it the rest of the yeah. world, the rest of the world <laughs> yes. doesn't yeah. get yeah it, it's 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 uh it's english people speaking english in a way that annoys the rest of the world but actually we, we're trying to do something nice yeah, <laughs> we're we're all right. We're not twats, really. So anyway, I've I've, give, I've tried to give you some time to have a think about it. So, is it okay. "Do It's Christmas" by Band Aid or Oasis? Don't look back in anger. Oh, now, I mean, Band Aid is such a massive song in the UK, like you said, for Christmas and and for charity. Um. But don't look back in anger was a massive part of our school child. I remember just debating like blur of an oasis, like you know, and sitting in class and like talking about the songs that are coming out. It was a, it was a big cultural thing, wasn't it? Back in the nineties, oh man, two really big songs from different cult, different eras. Okay, think about this. This this is something. I mean, it might be a little bit biased towards Band Aid, but I'll try my best not to do it. Could you go the rest of your life, um, January to November, not hearing Don't Look Back in Anger, or could you go every Christmas for the rest of your life not hearing Do They Know It's Christmas? Oh, <laughs> wow. I mean, <laughs> Band Aid's always a staple at Christmas, to be fair. It's always on the albums, always playing in the background, is always on the radio. Oh. So when you put it like that, that you could say, okay, these songs are equal, but then you put it like that, what could you not hear? Like, can you go at Christmas without hear? I know you don't want to hear it 60 times. No. Or 90 times. You could probably hear it twice a day in December and be all right. Yeah. Did you hear it three times a day for you know, for you know the whole of December? Maybe not, <laughs> but you could hear it sixty times a day. Could you listen to that? Could you listen to it twice a day? Could you listen to Oasis? Don't look back and anger twice a day for the rest of the year. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, I probably could, to be fair, but I mean, I, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't really listen to much music these days. Um, not like I used to, anyway. Um, okay, I'm going to put through Band Aid. Oh, I did not expect that. I on a, I was getting ready to go. I was getting ready to put through Oasis. Okay, oh. wow. Okay, cool. That took some deciding, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Oh, okay. Right. This one should be a little bit easy. Well, I don't know. I don't oh. know. I don't know how you feel about songs anymore. I thought <laughs> I knew you. I don't. Match up three. True by Spandau Ballet. Yes. Versus Going Underground by The Jam. Oh. I feel like going underground by the jam scraped through in the last round. Um, but and I love, 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 Spandau Ballet. I get the feeling you're not a huge Spandau Ballet fan, are you? Oh, I, I like uh, Spandau Ballet. I like Gold. I like True. Um, but to be fair, I think that was probably the only songs I knew of theirs, like their hits. Oh, okay. Well, rather see, than some you, of the other ones. Yeah, if you listen True is a to... great song. Yeah, if you listen to the um, if you listen to the best of, then you know, like like I did as a child, and all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, shit. Actually, they did other ones, but the but uh, yeah. true and gold are their their best known ones. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, 
I'm going to go on this one about which is which song I like more, and I'm going to put through True and Spandau Ballet because I, I do love that song. Right. Okay. Well, that was pretty quick. Okay. Right. So yes. match up for well, going never mind going underground. The jam going, going home. home. <laughs> yes. Match up for Jamiroquai with Deeper Underground. Versus A Good Heart by Fergal Sharkey. Oh, I like that song as well. Yeah, for it, I reckon for the longest time, when I was like in single figures and a teenager... I thought I did, and I, I didn't. I didn't put two and two together. I thought Fergal Sharkey was a woman. I didn't. I didn't realise. <laughs> to, to be fair, it's a strange name, isn't it? I thought Sharkey and George at the time. I was like, is that <laughs> Sharkey and George, is he a crime buster of the sea? <laughs> oh, wow! I didn't. I didn't realise that it. Um, it was the the singer from the Undertones no. <laughs> that like, I also loved at the same time. Like bloody hell, but yes, so uh, anyway, so Jamaraquai, Deeper Underground versus Good Heart, Fergal Sharkey. Oh, I mean, both of these are good songs I really enjoyed when they came out. Good Heart is hard to find, is actually a, is a is an underrated 80s song. Deeper Underground is, is probably the best thing to come out of Godzilla, the 98 movie. <laughs> yeah, I hated yeah. that movie. Um. I, it was just so bad. I mean, to cast Matthew Broderick is like one of the league. Yeah, I was like, oh god, this guy. I don't know what it is. I just don't like his acting. I'm just like, apart from maybe Ferris Bueller, but that's the only stuff I yeah, really enjoy. I'm, yeah, I'm just like I'm this guy. Yeah, I know what you mean, dude. I know what you mean. Uh, um. Oh. Okay. And Jamaica was huge. I don't. I know he was reasonably big in the US, but you got to remember, like in the UK, massive in the UK, yeah. Massive, absolutely yeah. goddamn huge. I'm... I want to say it's my favorite song of his is um, Lit Lau, and that's just purely. Yes. Oh, wow, really? Okay, yeah. Um, but I mean, he, t- he did some great songs. Um, Deeper Underground is a great song as well, so I'm going to put it through. I'm putting Deeper Underground through. Ah, oh, there it's we a go. Tough one. I'm I'm to... Sorry to Fergal for him going home. I'm trying to think of the um. I'm trying to think of the the my favourite Jamaica song now. Oh. Um. Oh, virtual insanity. That's it. Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. That's. I mean, the the video really helps, but shit, I actually didn't like. Um, is it too young to die or something? Like right. I think they. Oh yeah, too young to die was uh, ninety three. I thought, hey, yeah. this guy's an absolute fucking pillock. <laughs> like I really, I really, really didn't like. I, I just didn't get it. I was too in '93. I was too young to get it. I think that. Yeah. I think that's that's the problem. Um, and then I think by about um, you know '90, you know '94 with um, Space Cowboy, I was like, oh, <laughs> starting to get it. Not to, not not as shit. And yeah. then um, and then with Cosmic Girl. And uh, virtual insanity. I was like, ah, that's it. I'm jizzing. <laughs> I'm jizzing. And of course, canned heat was in 1999. And yeah, that was it. Yeah. So, totally anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. Match up five. <laughs> Wake me up before you go go by Wham. Oh, Wham. Wham. Versus like a prayer by Madonna. Oh. No. Yes. Now. Hmm. Yes. Again. <laughs> I'm not a big Madonna fan. No. Like a prayer is a good song, but against the mighty George and the Wham, I'm going to have to put through Wham because I just <laughs> like the song better. Not so. even, not even thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great. Yeah, yeah, Madonna. Right, uh, okay. Yeah, her, her greatest song ever. But fuck that shit. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, pretty okay. much. <laughs> up against wake me up before you go go for classic. No, it, it's not um it's not um papa don't preach i know I, I i like like a prayer but um i don't think it's as good as other people make it out to be so i can i, I would go with that i wouldn't have made a decision quite as quick no, as that no, okay. <laughs> right, fuck the fuck of shit. okay matchup six <laughs> the power of love by frankie goes to hollywood 
a good song. Uh, it's another Christmas song, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's two Christmas number ones this week, at least. Oh. I, I haven't even bothered to think about it, really. Um, <laughs> this is UB40, Falling in Love with You. Oh, what? Man, sing. I do love yeah, UB40. It's a good song. It's a good song. I actually prefer this cover to Red Red Wine, and I know Red Red what Red Red Wine is probably UB40's most recognisable song, and it is a good song. And I know I sent it home, but I think it was up against something I liked more. Yeah, I was a bit pissed off, but to be fair, I know you were. <laughs> to be fair, but... it's like it's like the greatest UK wedding song ever. But um, <laughs> yeah, but but they're both covers. Yeah. Mm. I mean, The Power of Love is a, that's a great song by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. A tough one, this one. I'll protect you from the hooded claw. Give I mean, he, he, he he was, he, from your door. What does that fucking mean? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> he obviously watched Lost Boys. Um <laughs> I, I remember he was on like the new the new version of Nevermind the Buzzcocks, and I think it was a Christmas special where he sung this at the end of the show, mm-hmm. and I I just thought it was great. I mean, he still had a powerful voice. Um, oh, I bet he does. I bet he does. Really good song. Oh. I would like. I tell you what, I don't even know what is. I don't even know the um, Holly Johnson. I've never known. I've never known his uh, his the the singer's the Scouser, name. Scouser, I think. It's a Scouser, but that makes a difference. I just like to say that. Um, <laughs> I'll protect you from the hooded claw. <laughs> Keep the vampires from your door. Um, absolutely fantastic. No, he's just he's just got a hell of a fucking voice. Yeah. Uh, apparently, just googling it, I can't talk now. Uh, just googling it very quickly. Uh, had, you know, there's all of a sudden a look at the the Guardian, which is a, a paper in the UK, which is uh, a wee bit left wing. Uh, yeah. So anyone who's not interested in, in that, you can you probably just go whatever, mate. Um, but um, <laughs> I, I, I read it, and it, you, I reckon fifty percent of the time it, it, it gives it gives some good stories. But uh, they're telling us six hours ago from this recording that Frankie goes to Hollywood biopic. Relax is in the works. Oh, now I'm a little bit I'm a little bit fed the fuck up of uh, biopics. Um, right. I don't think this is going to be particularly interesting. However, mm. however, it would be. The, the the one good thing that's going to come of yet another fucking musical biopic is going to be uh, the the popularization of uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood with the kids. Yeah, that's good. It's, I, I I tell Mills about the the whole like um, you know like I, again I'm pretty sure I've said this before. I don't know why I have to call it, but the, the gay wave yeah. of. Uh, music in the uk and how it just gave us so many fucking absolute bangers it did. and uh, it did. and I, I i love the gay wave of uk music it, you know it's it, you know, it's magnificent it's got some fucking bullshit i don't think the pet shop boys were all that but you know it I mean they're better than most things that are in the charts today and uh, but frankie goes to hollywood you know they're like uh they were here you know easy come easy go we released yeah. a couple of songs toodaloo but whilst we're here, <laughs> burn hot, burn bright, fucking magnificent. Right, yeah. I, I've been I've been chatting, so you can make a decision. Have yeah. you made a decision? I am. I'm going to put through the power of love. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. You know, hopefully, the lads from UB40 don't hold it against you. Oh, I'm sure they've got more things to do than worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't, I don't want to say. Yeah. But Birmingham's uh, not on the list, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> no one from fucking Birmingham listens to us. Okay. No. Right. No. Yeah. Not even one. Not even like right down no. the bottom of the fucking no. list. Just no, no one. You can go right <laughs> down to the bottom of like you know eighty cities or something. And Birmingham is not fucking on there. Even the Scots listen to more of this show than Birmingham and the Scots yeah. famously hate the English. 
So you yeah. um, uh, go Scotland and um, yeah. And um, yeah. also, also, if you're Scottish and you want to go independent, you fucking go for it. Go for yeah. it, girls. I don't blame them. <laughs> no, don't fair. blame you. This, this country's fucked. Get away from us. You go for it. I'm fucking I'm right behind you. But uh, just keep yeah. listening to the pod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep listening. Keep passing the pod. Uh, we are we are po- we are we are pro independence. You go for it. And Birmingham, well, fuck you, apparently. And uh, <laughs> match up seven. Here we go. This this one's an easy one. It's also Frankie goes to Hollywood. Relax. Oh. Yeah. Uh, up against two unlimited, no limit. Oh, oh wow! And I, I mean, oh. the tick's already there. Well, I, I don't know why I'm fucking bothering, but you know, Let, let's go through yeah. the motions. I mean, I mean, relax is a good song as well. I mean, that and the power of love. Sure, 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 oh. sure. Oh, 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 who, oh, oh, oh. who thought it would? <laughs> who thought it would come out twice? Two Frankie goes to Hollywood songs. I know, I know. This is what I mean. It's all random. I really do pick it randomly. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a great song. No Limit as well. I mean, is it better Is it better than Relax? So that's the thing. I, I actually find these both about like seven and a half out of ten. Like, I, I really enjoy both of these songs. I don't think either of them are absolute fucking bangers. But if I hear them, I'm like, oh... And I, I turn yes. up, like I'm really, really happy to hear them both. I know yeah. you think that Two Unlimited is uh, it, it is like a, a nine point five or something. You're like, yes. And, I just uh, enjoyed their, I just enjoyed their songs. So yeah, it was great. I, I, you are the chairman of the uh, of the Two Unlimited, uh, yeah, UK fan club. I am, yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm the only member of the chair <laughs> <laughs> of Two Unlimited fan club. And so you, for that. Yeah, if you join, you get a free pencil to wind the uh, wind the tape back in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go on, go on. I'm going to put through. To, I'm going to put through. No limit. Of course you are. Of course you are. Oh, there you go. So Frankie goes. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Frankie goes through, but then Frankie also goes home. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Match up eight. The Bluebells, Young at Heart, oh. versus Ryan Adams. Everything I oh. do. I do it for you. Oh, and we recently learned that Bionic hates this song. Oh, I thought it was you. No, no, Bionic was the one who said he, he oh. had issues with it. Of course. Oh, it's I mean, I, lo- I, I liked the song, but it did get very annoying listening to it week after week. Oh, that's um, right. Because it's his as- birthday song, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So your birthday song. If you don't know people, it's it's a song that was number one the week that you were born. Uh, so yes. mine is Red Red Wine. You be forty. Bionics happens to be um, uh, obviously uh, Brian Adams. Everything I do, I do it for you. Danger. Can't remember yours. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> I know what it, I, I've got a funny feeling. I know what it is, but. Um, I'm just trying uh, to have a look to see what was number one in 1982 in March. Okay, Let me just have a look. You know um, people about about these two songs. So the bluebells. It was, the, it oh, was the lion sleeps tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely, fantastic! So uh, a real like epic masterpiece then. Oh yeah. <laughs> One of the best songs ever made, ever sung. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! You think I'm a lot happier if I was built, born in May and June, where I could have had House of Fun. Oh, or, of course, yeah. Well, y- y- this is the thing. In September. Oh. I, I, I hung around. Well, I, I'm not around. I decided not to bother to come out until after the Sunday UK chart down. I, I, I turned up in time for dinner, the Sunday. <laughs> uh, in the UK, it's always done on a Sunday. Like the UK chart is always done on a Sunday. I turned up afterwards. Um, so if, you know, after the you know, UK number one countdown, now if I turned up like, I don't know, like half an hour or an hour earlier, 
um, my birthday song would have been uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Give It Up. Right. So it, it's, it's, it's a matter of hours, you know, so yeah, it, it, can, you know, it can be here or there. But yeah, it's, uh, oh, there you go. It, it's, it's your birthday song. I, I like that. But um, anyway, I don't know how we got into that. But, uh, oh, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. He fucking hates this. Uh, it's a bit annoying for you. Um, I love the Blue Bells, Young at Heart, but I don't expect it to beat Brian Adams. But what do you say? This is Ask Dangerous. You know what? After everything that's gone on and thing, I'm going to put through Young at Heart. Ooh! Whoa! Fuck! Okay. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I put a tick <laughs> next to it. I don't know how to work my own phone. I'm so surprised. <laughs> That's massive, man. Did the song really get on your tits that much? It did. I mean, uh, again, initially for the first couple of weeks, it was like a great song. But then I, I, it was like 11, 12 weeks later, and he was like, oh, I can't cope with this anymore. It was almost like a nickelback came out with a um, how you remind me. It's like, oh, this is a great song. And then it just gets overplayed, and you're just like, oh, God. Yeah. And it takes like 10 years before you can actually fully appreciate the song again. <laughs> so um, I've just put, I've, put I've, I've kicked him out purely based on my original anger of it being <laughs> number one for so long. It's like, oh, for God's sake. Oh, oh here we go. Well, that's, that's controversial, and uh, well, it makes me happy because the Blue Bow <laughs> through to round four. That's one of my. I mean, to be fair to the Blue Bows, that song annoyed me a lot when it was always on an advert, and I was like, oh, yeah. God. But then when, when the advert went away and you just you listen to it in a separate space, you're actually like, oh, it's actually a really good song, to be fair. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, there we go. It's, uh, it's, um, you've got, you know, you got the violins in there, and it's all very happy and chirpy, and it was not of the time. I feel no. well, it kind of was. It did have a bit. It did have a bit of a feel of the time, but seventies um, and nineties, to be fair. Yeah, there's something there. It, it, it did feel kind of of the time, but I think the majority of the music in the charts was going in a different direction. But yeah, brilliant. Okay, right. Match up nine. Don't turn around by Aswad. Cool. Aswad. 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 That's, I can never pronounce that. I always forget. Uh, one of these days, we're going to bump into an Aswad fan and they're going to go, ah, twat. Um, versus England and New Order, World in Motion. I'm just going to put a tick next to that. <laughs> God, I, I, I'm not, I know you. I know you now. Well, I mean, it's a great song. <laughs> it's got John Barnes rapping on it. <laughs> I mean, that's why Don't Turn Around is a great song. It's pretty tough, and it's disappointing to send it home, but I'm going to put through World in Motion. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah you are. I know you. A, yeah. Right. Well, you think you know me. <laughs> okay, Edge. <laughs> okay. Right. Match up 10. Elton John with Sacrifice. Oh. Versus oh, yeah, very aptly up against Iron Maiden, bring your daughter to the slaughter. So we've got oh. slaughter versus sacrifice. <laughs> okay, right. Wow. I mean, I enjoy Elton John's songs. There are certain songs that are a lot better than sacrifice. Yeah. Um, yes. Something like yeah, I'm still standing. I really enjoy Woo! Crocodile Rock stuff yes. like that. Yes. Um, I do enjoy Iron Maiden as well. Um, Bring me your daughter to the slaughter. I think was. It's not one of the best. I, think ones. It, oh, I don't know. It's it's a pretty good one. Um, good, but I can think of like a couple of better ones. Oh yeah, there are there are some better ones, um, but I do enjoy uh, that song. To be fair, uh, I'm trying to think. It was it was number one for a reason. I think it was only made number one because they sold more records. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it knocked something off the top spot for a reason. I can't remember what it was. Oh, Ooh. trying to think. When was it number one? Was it in ninety or ninety one? Bring your daughter, bring your daughter to the slaughter. Uh, 89? 1990? I was released 89, but it got, but the, 
but it was on the album. It was on a 1990 album. Right. I'm trying to think of when it was actually number one. I, but I, I'm, I'm going to put through Bring Me Your Daughter to your slaughter because, again, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Sacrifice. Um, okay, this led to the song competing with Cliff Richard's Saviour's Day. There we go. That was it, yeah. Christmas number one. It's another fucking Christmas song. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Story this week. Um, uh, but due to not being officially released until the week after Christmas, went straight to number one on the UK singles chart on 30th of December. Well, it's in December, so fuck it. Go yes. Iron Maiden. And you know what? They go through to the next round. Sorry, Elton, but um, Sacrifice is not your best song. Okay, right. Uh, Danger, we're done with this segment, I do believe. Oh, yeah, it was a great, it was a pretty tough, there was some tough ones in there, some easy ones, but um, yeah, I've got, I'm going to go anyway. I'm going to rewatch the old Lost Boys, so I'm going to bugger off now. Hi there, pod fans. Thanks for joining us as we take another glance into the past and have a retrospective gander at what we were all talking about back in the day. So we can do this. I send Dangerous out to the garage and I have him wheel in our favourite item of record rousing detail detecting bit of kit. Here it is in all its glory. The Retro Monthanator 3000. Right. I don't know about you. But I'm hungry for some headlines. Dange, fire up that pooter. Good evening. Here are your headlines for May 1987. Jumping Jack Flash is released in the UK cinemas. Nothing's going to stop us hits UK number one. And Coventry City win the FA Cup for the first time in their history. Ooh. Okay, right. I should do the usual. Sorry. I I I forgot (laughs) myself, but that was the news. Those are the headlines. And that's what we were all talking about back in the day in the UK. Great work, sir. As per usual, um, any of those retro monthinated generated headlines that really strike a chord with you? Yeah, well, nothing, nothing's going to stop us now. Is a, is one of my favourite songs in, from the eighties. So I love that song. To be fair, so yeah, probably yeah. that one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, Coventry wouldn't mean anything to the rest of the world but the fa yeah. cup is is the oldest uh organized cup competition in the entire world and it does mean a lot to uh to football fans over here and especially uh, back in 1987 yes um you know the 90s and the 80s and backwards it, yeah it, it meant a huge amount it still does to certain people i think it means yeah. more to older fans but it, it's great in coventry are such a forgotten team like they yes. it's it's very very sad to see them in the state that they are now but um yeah. but that, that that's huge but i don't it's funny for some reason it doesn't really register with me which is strange like it like no. i don't know like my brain took a year off from my brain <laughs> took a year off from reg- registering the fa cup this year but there you go uh jumping jack flash i do like this i have seen this i enjoyed it yeah. Um, Rookie Goldberg. Yeah, and not just a not just a, a Rolling Stones song. No. Um, no. I I like it, and it's, it was it was fun. And you know what? Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg and Jonathan Price, and Carol Kane, Annie Parts. You know what, what's not to enjoy? You know, yeah. Straight away. You've you've got some great characters. So Whoopi Goldberg, I mean, you have to be hiding under a fucking rock not to know who that is. Jonathan yeah. Price, you might go, mm, no, I don't know. Bertie's a, a huge part of the um, Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. 
um, yeah. as uh, Governor Swan. Yeah. Uh, Carol Kane is in Scrooge that we've covered in another episode. But she, recently, she's also been in Hunters, which is a fantastic series. Uh, she just has these intense eyes. Yes. In these intense eyes. Oh God, she just and she's just amazing to look at, and she's yeah. just a master of different voices. I, I I love her. She's great. Annie Potts. You know the you know Janine Melnitz. Yeah. It was her playground, um, and she, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, Jim Belushi, of course, is in there. I, I, I don't mean to say, you know, um, I don't mean to say uh, Jim Belushi is like an afterthought, or, or was it Jerome Crab? Is it? I, I, I can't remember his name. Um, I can't remember what else he's been in. Be fucking brilliant. Um, but I, I, but I don't know. It's just. Jerome Crab. Oh yes, yeah, so he was in uh, the Fugitive. He's just an absolute shit in everything he does. What an arsehole. <laughs> he's brilliant. Like, I, like, he's great. He's great. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's. I would like to do an episode on this, but I think what I need. I haven't watched this since the mid nineties. Right. I know it came out. I know it came out in the mid eighties, but I don't think I watched it until the mid nineties. Um, and so I think it's. Uh, it's, it's one of those one of these ones that we're gonna have to have a really good watch because we don't neither of us as far as i'm aware watched it in or around the time and so i remember watching to... it on bbc one but i think it was like early 90s right yeah okay we'll see early 90s not that too you know not that bad not that far right. after which you would expect with bbc BBC One, yes. you, you'd watch yeah. it like about four or five years five after years it came later. out. Of yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, that's great. You don't care when you're a kid, do you? It's just the opportunity to you know to watch that. But uh, yeah. I think we're going to have to go with uh, nothing's going to stop us now. Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. Uh, where? Where? Where do you start with that? Oh. I mean, the video's great. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was from the movie Mannequin, wasn't it? So um, it, was. it was. Yes, you saw the you saw that movie Mannequin, and I think it was used at the end, wasn't it? So, um, but I just remember watching that. I, I remember. I think I remember watching Mannequin and hearing the mu- mu- uh, the music, uh, and then seeing the video and just be like, "Wow, this is amazing!" <laughs> so, I mean. It, it was it was co-written by D- 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 Diane Warren, who's done a lot of um, musical, you know, writing yes. for other artists. Yes, the um, magnificent Diane Warren. She's uh, she yes. is excellent. Yes, and, I mean uh, Starship. Starship. I didn't know too much about them. I know they're a big band in the eighties and towards you know the end of the nineties and that. But I mean, <sighs> that, I don't know. A, yeah, it's a weird band, Starship, because yeah. they were originally jefferson starship but before yes ah is it weren't they were like jefferson airplane and then they went jefferson starship and then they just became starship and you know what i'm not i'm not too hot on the members that left and the members that stayed i have to say i i I, I tell I, I I've had more than enough chance to research this and I and I haven't I have to be really honest um yeah. you know, um they they were massive with you know we built this city and you know, they they had a, an a, an album in like the mid 80s yeah. knee deep in the hoopla um <laughs> great name for an album which is a lyric from um we built this city um which everyone knows, and I don't care what kind, what genre of music you like. Everyone knows we built this city, um, yeah. and um, yeah, this song is. It, I think people tend to forget it. Like people think that this song is almost like an entity on, on its own without a band. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's true. I mean, again, if you don't know the if you don't know the history of Jefferson Airplane and. And that, then you would probably think that you know it's not the same band or it's not the same ex members or something like that. So, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, I, I didn't really know that. I mean, I, I didn't know. I mean, I knew we built the city, but I didn't know what had happened to that band. I just remember just really loving this song. Um, mm. It didn't. It, I wasn't like a musical historian, so I wasn't going to be like, again, it wasn't easier to find out the history of stuff back then, back in the 80s and 90s. No, until, no. Until Google came along, you wouldn't know unless you unless you were a big fan of their music and followed them. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's fascinating to go back over the history of like bands and what had happened and why they've split and all that stuff and formed new new bands and stuff shorten their names and all that but um <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know what it is about this song i just i just i just really love it <laughs> the words the, the music video it's just it's just great and the, and the movie i mean mannequin i don't know what you thought of mannequin i mean it's got it's got um andrew oh, mccarthy God. and and the person i all when i was a kid yeah. she was as far as i was concerned it's like when i grow up i'm gonna marry that woman Yes, yeah, I know she was one of your favorites. Yeah. Uh, and, um, uh, and God bless that. God bless that woman. She actually, when I was in charge of of Twitter for the show, yeah. um, I think I said something reasonably nice. I didn't even, I didn't even kiss her. So I literally just said something reasonably nice, and yeah. bless her. And uh, she, she liked, uh, she liked what I said. And as far as I was concerned, that. That was amazing. That was one of the best. That was one of the best things in my life. It's like I grew up loving the pants off of this woman, and then for her just to, to put a silly little heart on a silly <laughs> little uh, comment. That's fucking amazing. Oh, that like oh, fantastic. Yeah, I I love this film. I know it's I know it's not brilliant. No, and because, I mean I think the reason yeah. I watched it more was because I saw that. Uh, gw bailey was in it and i thought what the hell is oh, captain man. harris doing in there yeah and he plays a very similar character to captain harris totally, in yes movie. So totally like, totally oh he's just he's just re reprised his role in a different film so. oh yeah absolutely with the dog and everything yeah, yeah. um no I, I it's it's great it's what I, I actually i was aware and this is weird because i struggled to i struggled to ask my mum and dad about Okay, so here we go. I've always said that if you've got older older brothers and sisters, that it's easier to get into music. Um, like you did, you had a, a an older sister who had a boyfriend who got you into metal. Yeah, uh, and I I had my parents who were only eighteen years older than me. Yeah, now, and now they 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 got me into some pretty cool music, but I had to get myself into a lot of music. Now, I went right. through the best part of secondary school being an absolute ignoramus about music like you know for the best part con compared to how i am compared to what i was before secondary school and compared to what i am now i was i knew fuck all but for some reason even though i had no one to tell me about this i knew i guess i must have heard it on the radio and i must have put two and two together I knew that this was Starship, and I, you know nothing's going to stop us now. And that, uh, um, um, oh fucking hell, everything else they did, you know, ah, uh, oh, I can't think. Um, built this city. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I knew, I knew they, they, they did both of these songs, and 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 I thought, oh, what a great band! This is amazing. This is fantastic. And yeah. um, I always wanted to watch the film i was aware that this is a soundtrack to a film and i don't but i don't think i watched it until i was in my late teens maybe mid to late teens okay. and i was i think at this point i was a bit of a picky twat and i was like <laughs> wow it's got andrew mccarthy and it's got kim cattrall so therefore it's amazing and you know obviously yeah. Jeffy bailey uh, yeah, 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 yeah. um yeah. Even, even the even the over the top hideously annoying uh gay guy is actually it's got something to offer can't remember his name even he's got something to offer he's like you know this this is no, that's not how gay people act but it, <laughs> he, he was he was quite fun um and i i thought it was amazing and i felt like it was yeah it, it was part of me i was like okay i'm gonna take this this is me now this is me i i am you know 
I am young Gary. I, <laughs> I, I, I love these things. And, you know, and it, it meant something to me. It was very, very important. And um, I actually prefer yeah. nothing's going to stop us now to... <clears throat> To do one, and I've forgotten the name We're of the song. City. Thank you very much. You're just gonna have to keep <laughs> saying that. Um, I, I because I know, let's see, in I, I don't know why, I don't want to say because, but I, I I know that in my my mum moved away to Australia and I moved into her house. I lived there with an ex girlfriend of mine and it was absolutely wonderful. I lived a couple of doors away from a pub where everyone was lovely and I made some great friends and had some great times. And there was a, a garage at the end of the garden and I turned it into a boy's room. I say a boy's room. Everyone was bloody welcome around there. And I painted the walls white <laughs> and we had marker pens and everyone had to come around to Gary's garage. <laughs> right and uh, it's ggs we go to the pub we'd have a few drinks we'd leave early we'd get some booze and we'd go back to ggs and we'd all <laughs> write our name you, you if you came round, you signed your name on the wall and put a little quote yeah. underneath it and um and uh, we built this city it was great and we had fun but there's something about nothing's going to stop us now where yeah. it made you want to pick you know, if you're if you're a uh one of the the bigger one if you're one of the bigger ones of the friends group it's like okay what do you do i use my power i use my <laughs> fat man power to pick my skinny friends up and yeah uh, and yeah and, and you, you know you you just you just you you you, you, you thump the air you you know you punch the air and you you feel that you feel that i don't know how how do you say it when about that ballad amazingness <laughs> i don't know it's yeah. not it's not it's not as it's a shit way to explain it <laughs> but nothing's gonna stop us now is the is it's like the the twin of the film it's not technically actually that good but god damn does it make you feel good when you hear it especially yes. once you've had a couple to drink and <laughs> it like okay it's like it's got a, it's got its time and it's got its place and yes. um, I would really, really love, you know, when we get down the line and we, we've done a deep dive into all kinds of other things um, to go back and, and look at Starship and, and Mannequin and Andrew McCarthy and Control, everything that comes together. And, you know, maybe even Diane Warren and Albert Hammond, you know, in, you know <laughs> as singers, just just all there's all kinds of things. There's sure. all kinds of things that we can do uh, with this. But um, if you were there and you loved it and you you you, you, you had any sort of a person, I mean, Dange, if you haven't guessed, is the quiet. <laughs> I mean, where have you fucking been? Uh, but Dange <laughs> is the quieter out of the two of us. OK, that's not to say that Dange does not fucking party like a like an animal. Like Dange, <laughs> Dange is a cool, cool guy who like can really fucking go for it. He's just it's just the fact that he's a co-host with this mouthy talkative twat and danger is like a, a, a real real party animal and this is the kind of thing that you know, say it's danger bionic and myself and like you know and, and anyone else anyone else that wants to come out and, and party with us this is the kind of song that gets cranked up to 11 out of 10 and we yes. sing to and we love and oh damn it's it's absolutely incredible and like again if you if you if you're our age or if you're older, then you understand this and you know where we're coming from. Isn't this just one of these things that you just think, oh, you know, I'm so glad I can appreciate being this age. Yes, life can absolutely suck sweaty donkey dick sometimes. But <laughs> fuck me, we've had we've had the best time in the 80s and the 90s. And if you're a little bit older, of course you've enjoyed the 70s. You know, uh, and if you're a little bit younger, then yes, of course, you enjoyed like the like the you know the early noughties and everything. There was a, such a great time, and um, yeah, it, 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 this is just one of those. Um, this is one of these badges of honor that oh, I, yeah. I, 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 as being the age I am and danger as well, we we get to wear on our our retro jacket of pride so uh, yes. uh yeah absolutely magnificent work uh before i start crying and knocking one out <laughs> and doing all the rest of it 
uh, ruining any future uh, future potential episodes. We're going to leave it there. We'll go on to the next episode. Uh, we'll go on to the next segment. Sorry, but um, absolutely fantastic work, Dange. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for dragging the uh, retro month and eight to two thousand out of the garage each week and uh, and and getting a, a couple of good subjects out of it. So uh, well done, sir. Yeah. Um, what's up next? Oh, I believe we've got uh, another Quoteley from the Quoteley Namely Boys. Okay, no more retro journalistic joy for you lot this week. That's your lot. We'll be back real soon, right after the break. Back again. Hey there, guys and Dange, it's Andrew and Brandon from Namely 90s, your brother horseman in this retro apocalypse. Today we have a little quiz for you, a memory game, if you will, that Gaz has brilliantly named Quotely 90s. Each week we'll send you a quote and see if you can guess its origin from some piece of pop culture in the 1990s. Just remember, our worlds weren't as interconnected then since we lived across the pond and the internet still ran at 26 kilobits per second. We'll also, for our own amusement, do multiple readings and either do poor imitations of the character slash person who said it, or just poor imitations of whomever we feel like. And if you're lucky, you'll hear Andrew slip into his terribly offensive English accent. Well, is that enough of a setup for you lads? Are you ready for Quotely 90s? Name the movie, and if possible, the character who said this. Bonus points for the actor. A mouse with a pet cat. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh. I know this. Oh. Oh, a mouse with a pet cat. Fuck. Um. Oh, I've watched this. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't like it. No. I I thought, oh, this is shit. But Ooh. but I remember that line being the best thing about it's a film. Yeah. I think I know what it is. Ah, okay, all right, okay. So it's a mouse. Okay, so the mouse. So 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 the mouse is the main character. So yeah. I'm trying to think when mice are the main characters. I you hated know. this movie. Okay. <laughs> oh, you you know it. you're just waiting for me to put two two and two together. Okay. Um, yeah. Ah, fuck. Okay. Um. A mouse with a pet cat. Okay, so a mouse is a got main... one of my favorite actors in it, but I just I couldn't I I just couldn't I I don't know what he was doing for this movie. I was like, oh man, what are you doing? Okay, um, I'm trying to think of my So it's not the but it's not the witches. So it's no, not the witches. it's not the witch. Oh, uh... oh. Hugh, 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 Hugh Laurie, and is yeah. it like Elizabeth Perkins or something like that? Someone gorgeous, some gorgeous American actress from 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 from. Is that Elizabeth? Perkins? I don't know. Gina oh. Davis. Is it Gina Davis? <laughs> yeah. Not too dissimilar. Um, yeah. Oh, and <laughs> um, oh, he's got it. It's on yeah. the tip of his tongue. It's on the tips of my tongue. Um, uh, yeah, do it. Later. Thank you. Here we go. Yeah. Thank you, Art. Right, Stuart <laughs> Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stuart Little. Uh, Michael J. Fox. Right. Yeah. Is that who yeah. you were saying your favorite actor was? One of your favorite. Yeah, actors? one of my favorite actors. Yeah, I was okay. like, what are you doing in there? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, see, now I can go. Stuart Little, and I can see everyone that's in it. Ah, right, okay. Michael J. Fox, <laughs> Gene Davis. I thought, oh, fucking hell. Hugh Laurie, uh, oh, Nathan Lane. Good old Nathan Lane. I guess it is kind of funny. A mouse with a pet cat. <laughs> a mouse with a pet cat! <laughs> 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 
is said by Monty, a cat, friend of Snowball, voiced by Nathan Lane, the pet of Stuart Little, voiced by Michael J. Fox and Stuart Little. Did you remember Steve Zahn from Saving Silverman was the voice of Monty? I didn't. Also, Gina Davis, Hugh Laurie, and Jonathan Lipnicki are in this movie as the adoptive family of a mouse. And if you're interested in hearing more about Stuart Little, tough shit. Next Monday is our three-year anniversary special on which you can hear the lovely cast and Dange along with all of our other friends dropping by. Find it on your platform of choice at namely90s.com slash listen. Now back to the long time running, insanely dangerous Gaz and Dange. <laughs> Oh, there was nothing even vaguely insulting about that. Oh, I'm no. surprised. Well, I mean, unless he's just like having a pop at how long our episodes are for. <laughs> like <laughs> they do like a three minute uh, show and we do like a four hour show and he's like, oh, forever running. Yes. It was so on the nose, I didn't even see it. Oh, <laughs> have you got the loaf, you sneaky boy? <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I say I say that I don't I don't I don't, I don't think he, no, he's I don't got think other so. things to do than listen to the show. I was just, yes, I was just making that up. That was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Brandon does. I'm sure yeah. I have to, like I could say I I I could do it's anything. Just with the highlights of what they said. Yeah, just what yeah. do they say? Yeah, <laughs> just find out what if they got our quotely right, and then that's all he's interested in. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much to our brothers and retro, the incorrigible, encourageable, and indelible Brandon and Andrew, the moose and squirrel of the retro podcast universe. And if you like your nostalgia with a little bit more streamline and uh, a little bit more specified, then head on over to your streaming platform of choice and check out the Namely Nazis boys who will discuss deliberate, debate, and debase anything that they can get their cheeky mitts on. There are... Oh, insert um, insert our tune music here. Sad oh. music. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no fucking emails. So uh, oh. there's no... This is just there's just our our tune music. If you don't know what that is, you go if you want you want to hear the saddest music in the world ever, just just Google our tune. Our yes. tune. Bloody hell is that sad. Anyway, yeah, no, nothing there. All I will oh. say is uh pass the pod everyone. Yeah, exactly, Dange. <sighs> so oh. uh pass the pod everyone, pass it around, spread the word, especially in LA. Yes. And yes. Uh, um, that, there's a song about that back in the 90s, isn't it? Where the hell am I drinking in LA at 26? <laughs> I just remembered that. Um, oh. Yeah, we, we want to hear from you. Like Stevie Nick said, whether, you, hang on, whether you're from LA or not, we don't care. We just want to hear from you. Okay, so uh, like Stevie Nick said, you can talk to me. That's T I D R P inbox. T I D R P I N B O X. That's all one word at gmail.com. If you have a show based query or you want to speak to the danger man, then check out our socials. And if you want to get in touch with me via email and well, you can just talk to me about anything. Uh, I've just told you the email address. Um, Dange, what is coming up on the next show? Well, I mean, I had a I had an idea in mind throughout the whole show. I was like, this is what we're going to do next week. I, I love it. But just purely based on the thing we were talking about with Stuart Little, I've changed my pick to something. <laughs> and next week, we're going to be talking about Teen Wolf. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. You've gone from a mouse to a wolf. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. Indeed. Oh wow! Oh, I've got so many holes to pick in that fucking film. Oh, uh, I love I it. Love, I love Team War. I love <laughs> it's it. one of my love it. I'm gonna, movies. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cover it in dirty old man slobber. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, I, I want to give it some serious smoochies. Also, oh, yes. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna pick some fucking holes in that. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. Well done. <laughs> Done, sir. Okay, I'm off to decompress before catching some much needed Z's. Um, how about you, sir? Early night? Yeah, I've got a I've got a meeting in the morning with Warner Brothers to discuss um, 
doing a remake of Lost Boys with with yourself and me in in as the starring roles. So you know you're going to play David Powers and I'm going to play uh, Michael Emerson. So <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be sexy and forever young. You're going to be you're going to be the uh, the new to town cool yeah. dude who thinks he can take me on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow, I love that. Okay, okay. So, oh, okay. So, who's who's my who's my gang then? Oh well, I mean, Bionic's going to be in there. Well, because yeah. um, he is forever young anyway. He doesn't need to be a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Bionic. Uh, we'll have Carl. Yeah. Um, Lloyd. Uh, yeah, Lloyd. Lloyd will be in there as well. Yeah. Because yeah, he loves it. Well, I think I think Lloyd would probably be one of the Frog Brothers. <laughs> oh yes no i take it back yes he's totally a frog brother well done sir tremendous make it so number one uh, just before we go though i have to tell everyone because it's only fair um this episode was powered in no small part by the splendid whip it beans all you insaniacs and danger heads, Monster Munch, Dr. Pepper, and composer extraordinaire, Joseph McDade. And now... Game over indeed, pod fans. Don't forget to contact us via Twitter, Fuckbook, MySpace, Bebo and email. Or you can leave a comment on Spotify and tell us what you'd like to hear more of. Don't be shy. Straighten up your tie. Come down from the treehouse sitting in the sky. We're back at the usual time. And until that time, you stay frosty. Frosty.